Happy Holy Day, Moors, and welcome to House of Reawakening Minds. House of Reawakening Minds exists to provide for exploration and practice of spirituality in an enlightened community dedicated to honoring the myriad of sacred pathways to the universal creator. We are a holistic center for spiritual grounding, free thought, self-discovery, and Moorish science, an awakening experience for all ages. Tonight, we are pleased once again to present to you our National Grand Sheik, Paj Parikh Bey. We talk casually mainly because a lot of times when you know you, you make certain notes, but the energy or the spirit of people is telling you something else, meaning that you come where people are, because it doesn't help you if, it do, if you don't learn from it. And if, and if you cannot, um, say, cross-reference it, research it, and prove it for yourself, and that becomes your own. So we try to also give people reference points so that they can verify the information and grow with it. Also, um, we don't promote beliefs. We promote knowledge. Beliefs have stagnated our people, and the history and the record proves that, even though many of our people will vehemently deny that and will tell people that beliefs equal spirituality knowing that it doesn't. And so our people have been destroyed generation after generation. They've been robbed generation after generation. They've been abused generation after generation for lack of knowledge and for maintaining belief systems that should have been discarded when they were children. However, not knowing certain key pieces of information They've embraced the belief systems because they've trusted the people who presented those systems to them because they would usually hide behind the names of prophets in order to get over on the people. And they've successfully done that, and the world is not a good place for it. You get the point. Now, I want to really mention this uh, fact. Now, um, we were talking earlier, you know, with systems and stuff like that. So people really don't know history, uh, have a tendency to get caught up in whatever organizations they belong to and they identify with the organization rather than looking at the organizations as tools, which is the only thing they are. Just like your clothes, you change your clothes, mm, that don't change you, you're supposed to know who you are, all right? All right? So the prophet, no drawly, you know, uh, use an approach to bring our people back to the right state of mind by teaching them to be themselves so that they don't get caught up in these other imageries which we have a tendency to do because we've been trained that way like rats. And of course when people are trained that way and you tag Jesus, God, Allah, Moses, Muhammad to it, they have a tendency not to pay attention to details and then people who, who understand mind control, social engineering, take advantage of them. And then others, because they don't want to rock the boat, and they don't want people not to like them, will see it and won't say anything. And will go along with it and watch our people systematically be abused over generations. Which is again why uh, many um, of our people do not understand constitution and treaty principles. They hear about these things and they don't have the tools, they don't have the knowledge. It's not in their purview to activate these things, you know, to our disadvantage. Now, when people are in a position of what you call trust, they are kept in check by virtue of what you call constitutions, treaties, and bylaws. And when such instruments or foundation charter principles are violated, such persons are supposed to be immediately removed. Failure to do so is an acquiescence to fraud. And unfortunately, this is pretty much what has been happening to us as a people in almost all the organizations that we belong to. And so the, um, as an example, at the heart of the Moore's Divine and National Movement is the enforcement of the Constitution for the United States. And yet, if you um, give a, 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 a child's test, not even a deep test, not even a deep test, to most Moorish Americans who are national, whether they come from Great Seal, Round Table, Moore's Science Temple, Moore's Holy Temple of Science, any of them, what I've discovered over the years is, unfortunately, 75 to 80 to 90 percent of them would fail. And to cover up their failure, they'll just repeat 
you know, honor for no draw league as if that made them, makes them qualified. And of course, in the real world, that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And so they've been losing property, losing land, IRS been stealing their accounts, private foreign European uh, members of the Circle Church and the Round Chancery, i.e. bankers and lawyers have been foreclosing on their homes and they have no remedy whatsoever. And yet the people who were put in power to lead them were put in power to enforce the law. And they have failed to do so. That's a breach of trust. And no one has challenged them. And no jolly put in place what is called caveat emptor to warn the people from these types of persons in positions of authority who are actually smelly coppers. And with, over the generations, they've been stealing the finances. They've been collecting finances for buses and transportation for decades. No buses, no transportation. According to the charter, every temple must have a school. Ain't no schools, ain't never been there. The prophet had two presses for our own paper. And one of the things that he emphasized with us is to maintain the integrity of our own press, as that would be our most powerful weapon. And some of the people that always claimed to love Nuke Drali was the first ones to try to get him out of the way, and they literally broke it down and jumped it. And which is why you don't have the Moorish Guide today. And yet people are boasting about their relationship to Nuke Drali. And again, even to get this information to most people, you've got to come into a venue that's not under their jurisdiction to even be honest about this stuff. Because they'll attack you as if you're against the temple or against the movement knowing that you're telling the truth about the administrators that are still operating that movement, who are actually in breach, and no one charges them. So the deal of it is, is like the prophet said, take this information to the hedges and the highways, because it belongs to the people. It's their birthright. It's not something that's owned by some club or some organization. It is the people's birthright. And what I discover is many people by not knowing the politics, they don't know how the birthright is stolen. They hear it, they'll hear terms like, oh, the Europeans living off your virtues. And they repeat these things beautifully and awfully. You know, but in the real world of operations, they have no defense mechanism whatsoever. You know, most of them don't even know um, about Article Three um, jurisdiction of, of the judiciary, uh, being uh, breached. They'll talk uh, often about Article 1, Section 10 of the Constitution dealing with the gold and silver coin, and everybody focuses on that, and the so-called straw man in relationship to that, the Sister QB Trust that was set up by the Popes of Rome under the Spanish Inquisition over conquered peoples and conquered lands and the commercial operations that have been sub subsequently um, uh, placed in colorable legislation since 1492 under the powers of Popes of Rome and the United States Service Corporation in relationship to the Queen of England also and the Chancery operations on Fleet Street, England, which is really the foundation of the political operations here at North America, designed to steal the birthright of people of Canaanite and Moabite descent who are essentially, in short, known as Moors who have been branded Negro, Black, and colored to take them off the political platform so that if they come to the realization of the theft of their birthright and seek to regress to those who claim to be government, that they would actually be going to a fraudulent venue of private commercial trading venues that they wouldn't know are not courts. All clear. But no Ali, you know, um, brought us back our name and nationality and birthright and a connection to the land and with the charge to enforce that constitution and logically Moors who maintain the integrity to, to the cause and not to personalities recognize that Article 3 was aggregated and will activate the uh, judicial operations or enforcement of the political platforms of that constitution for the United States whereas Moors Americans and all the people can have due process. And to understand in principle process, or what you call a due process delayed, is due process denied. You know, and this is where fundamentally people need to understand um, why certain things were put in place. Um, and then again, you will see 
people who get involved with the political parties while not having a background and making opinions, sitting around talking about different candidates, and they don't even know the political platform. So, um, uh, anyone, preferably, yes, give the brother Mike up. I, I need you, assistance after your question, Mr. Chair. You made a reference to the place where we obtain this, uh, this justice, this fairness. And you were speaking of the organic constitution, Article 3, Section 2, Council of Court, diversity of nationality, diversity of citizenship. And that's Dr. important Morgan. because now these people were given nationality cards. And keep in mind, um, the prophet assigned men were essentially trustees to make sure that this information, you know, is taken to the four corners of the earth to all nations. Logically, starting with the Moorish nation here, who are the subject of the operations. And logically, they were given a nationality card, so that's automatically an instrument of diversity. That's right. A, a, a declaration or proclamation of diversity, whereas they, they would not be lawfully or unlawfully relegated under the Negro Acts or the Christian Black Codes, which were presently operative under that 14th and 15th Amendment. You know, which is why he said that the 14th and 15th Amendment was not necessary for the salvation of my people and citizens. That's right. So he put all the keys there. Now, whether or not the people use them, that that is a problem. The fact that they have not is evident in the history and in the circumstances of the people. Now, it is incumbent upon those who know um, to stay with the truth of the grain and go against the grain of those who went against the grain of enforcing that constitution but maintain those seats mm -hmm. and appear to have integrity because they have titles. Mm -hmm. Now people who don't understand color law, they're looking at the titles that people carry and not the work that they produce. Mm -hmm. And this is how people have become colored. They don't even know that color means artificial. They think color means the complexion of a people when it's the complexion of their social condition. <laughs> You know, um, and again, as a matter of fact, you got your black law dictionary. Can you read colored people and colored? Um, this is for everyone's um, comprehension on the use of language. And like when Nobu Drawley said, "You're not Negro, black, or colored." People who don't understand, who are having studied, think he's talking about complexion, but he's actually talking about social status. Are we clear? And this is also why he commanded every temple must have a school. Are we clear? Clear. Yeah. Go ahead. Can you uh, give him the mic? Yeah, go ahead. All right. And I still uh, uh, appeal to your assistance in a minute because I want you all. I want you all to read this. Go ahead. Okay. This is uh, Islam. This Islam. is. Islam. Islam. This is Black's Law Fifth Edition. Color and appearance, semblance or simulacrum, as distinguished from that which is real. Read that again. Color and appearance, semblance or simulacrum, as distinguished from that which is real. Now it's stop right there. Now, scholars and people who know the social engineering and language and the etymon degree and know that the word is God, knows that that's what that word means. And they teach our people that it means Afrocentricity and the adulation for supporting our people. And you just told the world that you're artificial and you're distinguished from that which is real. And then, then you, you gather around it emotional statements like you said something deep and spiritual and you just cast a negative spell on your people. And the word is God. And when you say it, you're held to it. Then they enforce the Christian black codes on such persons because they are colored, and that's actually legal correct. And yet, they, then they accuse them of being racist when actually they're giving you what you declare. Because your relationship with the rest of the civilized world is in the honor of your mothers and fathers. And if not, you're outside the platform of any rights of any human. Thus, such persons are declared as colored. That means they're fronting, they're faking, and they're distinguished from that which is real. So the same way that you would not come up here and water this artificial plant, looks beautiful in there. 
You know, don't come up and bring me water because it's artificial. That's why it looks good every week. It looks good for years. And don't ever lean over it. But the deal of it is, that's called, in, in law, that would be called color. So the same way you wouldn't water an artificial plant, a person that's outside the human family that declares that they're color does not get human rights because it doesn't apply to such person. They're not part of the human family by agreement. Because the rules that govern humans on the planet Earth and their interchanges with the families of nations is called constitutions and treaties. That's the foundation on how you interchange. Now the platform from which those interchanges are made are called platforms of diversity of nationality and diversity of citizenship. It is called enforcing the judicial branch, i.e. Article 3, Section 2. So if you've got a nationality card and you're communicating with other parties, that is the platform. And if you're following over Jali's instructions, and he says, help me in my great missionary work to bring my people back into the constitutional fold of government, enforcing our constitution for the United States of America, that's your platform. No scholar can deny that. No sheik can deny it. No sheikahs can deny it. No constitutionalists can deny it. But do you know how many Moorish Americans deny it? But claim that they're national? <clears throat> do you understand the problem that we have? You. Meanwhile, the Europeans still stealing these people's stuff. Mm. Their nationals and the Europeans who are foreigners are debating other people's identities to get you from paying attention to what's their identity. Mm -hmm. They're talking about other nations coming in or out of North America and then lying and saying that their country is America when the rest of the world knows that America is a continent. Promoting misinformation. Then claiming to be Americans of whom they are not. They're occupying America. They've been occupying America for a couple hundred years. And they've been robbing the people, murdering the people, genocide, and stealing our land and stealing our property. And now they're tithing our people in the name of tax. And our people don't even know the structure of government to recognize that that doesn't apply to them. And when they were nationalized, they were supposed to be coming out of that dead Negro act status. And those who were appointed to teach them were supposed to meet with those who were governing or claiming to have jurisdictional authority in personam over said persons, etc. That that proper status was declared with that nationality card and was supposed to be honored. But they start telling people that was a belief. Not some Europeans, people who's uh, called governors and grand sheiks and sheikhesses. And now Moorish Americans with nationality cards don't even know how to use them. And they're losing property, losing rights and everything. They're under the Negro Acts and the Black Codes, which that's supposed to take them out of that venue. And the persons who did that to them spend more time trolling people like me to tell them the truth than they do doing their job. However, if you teach the people themselves, because it's their knowledge, it's their birthright, they will learn for themselves and they will start taking responsibility to help themselves and help their families, because they'll be doing it with knowledge. Are we clear? Not based on some belief. Are we clear? Birthrights are related to what is called unalienable rights. An unalienable right cannot be leaned, and a lien is like a license or an application, meaning that a lien, like it's, it, 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 if, it's, uh, if it's leaned, if there's relationship to a license of any type or requirement to apply to some foreign entity, corporate entity, it's not an unalienable right. It's a privilege coming under Angelicus or legislation, it is color. Are we clear? Okay. So you must know the distinction between the two. All right? So that you're not fooled by people among your own and fooled by people 
Europeans who some of your own are really working for in secret with the Skull and Bones 501c3 kickback agreement to keep the Negro acts and the Christian black films going on while pretending to love their people and really not educating them. You know, Islam. Islam. Uh... <laughs> So would, if we braid our hair, braid our children's hair, because we can, mm -hmm. that's an alienable, un 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 unalienable un right, but yet people have to get a license. That's called to birth. braid. Now, look, that's called birthright theft. Come on. Now, point. Hold on. No, hold this, because we'll, we'll talk just for two seconds. As an example. When Noam Drawley came, one of the things that he was doing was setting things straight, setting things back in order. But he appealed to the Moorish Americans who were made conscious of the nationality and birthright to help in that missionary work. Are we clear? And he makes it very clear the mission is to enforce that constitution and bring our people back because they had been pushed out. Now logically, persons who were put in power to make law and to enforce law if they live according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, and it is known before the members. That means the members are supposed to be cognizant. They're supposed to be intelligently competent of what those persons are supposed to do. They were supposed to call up treaty and constitutional law of which these persons who claim to be government took an oath. They're already obligated to this, but they recognize that people have been miseducated and are ignorant and they and parties in conjunction with them have been taking advantage of an uneducated people for generations. And this is where the licenses come from, under the Christian Black Codes, which Moorish Americans, being national with a nationality card, are not supposed to be subject to them Black Codes. Are we clear? And their leaders were supposed to put these people in place. And instead, they was telling these people, like the reverence did down the corner, let us just pray. And, and, and the nigger acts that have been enforced over and over again and our people have been suffering wrongfully, unlawfully, and unnecessarily. So therefore, in the rule of government, when persons in positions of authority, i.e. trust, who are assigned to protect or to secure the rights of the people, when they breach, they are to be removed and all rights revert back to the people, which is why we're teaching these principles back to the people. It's their birthright. That must be understood. All right. Um, just to, to add on to that, I know here in the state, the state of Delaware, when I was you know doing what I was doing, working with nonprofits and government funding, if a man, for instance, were incarcerated mm -hmm. and had the ability to barber cut hair, they would allow him to cut hair of the you know other inmates while he was incarcerated. Oh, because that's what I did when, when I was a POW. Right, but when when he the is re too. right, no. but when he's a, when he's released, he they they deny him the license because of his record to do that outside. Now the deal of it is the license never applied to him. Now, when we're talking about the Moorish Divine and National Movement. These things are to be clarified to these people who have been under the Christian Black Codes for generations. The movements, those in the movement, their job is to inform them people. And it should have been done through the paper, which means whether they came to the temples or not, it's supposed to be public knowledge. Because these are divine rights. They are unalienable rights. They're not club rights. They're not conditional. Are we clear? People need to understand that birth rights are unconditional. Are we clear? That's right. Whether you're wearing your fez or not, that right belongs to you. Are we clear? Right. Yes, you're Ben Eel, Ali, Day, Al, they belong to you divinely. No club, no organization can own it, no government can steal it unless they are what? Waging war on you. Are we clear? Right. Now, you being Moorish Americans and part and parcel of this said government order because it came from martial law, which Obama exposed to everybody, to reinforce what some of you already knew and to reinforce what some didn't know, you have an obligation as a national and they have that obligations as citizens to enforce that constitution. 
which is why you're given these charges of taking responsibility. And also recognize that um, people who have the information, who assist you, you are as responsible to it as they are. So don't look at following anybody. Look at taking your responsibility, getting in the field and start picking some of these vegetables so that we can talk about, you know, what's for dinner. You know, it ain't supposed to be where you all all doing all the picking and stuff like that. You understand, you're all in the field all greasy and stuff like that. And I'm sitting on the fence with a straw talking about, I don't know if I like the way y'all make them string beans and stuff, but you know, you ain't got no say in that. You support the platform. You know, so the more side stuff of America was a is is a political platform set up to propagate the faith of Muhammad, then you need to understand what the faith of Muhammad is. It isn't what it appears to be. It's governmental structure and principles and customs and traditions of your ancient mothers and fathers from time immemorial. That's right. Upon that is built the law that governs you in your relationship to other men. So when you go out into the world, you remember the relations of your brothers and sisters in the temples, but you have the constitution when you step out there. And so you're being prepared for that. Are we clear? We are responsible, and we got to start acting like we're responsible and stop making excuses. Responsibility comes by virtue of having knowledge about the discipline that you're in. Keep this in mind, and we remind people on over and over again, logistics, write that down, write logistics down. And when you're talking logistics, we're talking the same way that we talk when, if you're dealing in language, and you're talking etymology, if you're dealing in chemistry, whether you're dealing with um, the mineral tables, or the substance tables, metal tables, etc., and then you're dealing with alchemy, that's a mixture of the physical and the abstract. All right, so this would be dealing with what you call breaking down anything that's before you and you break it down into its component parts and you study the smaller component parts see the nature of it try to analyze the purpose of it the texture uh, the function and then you reassemble it to understand or have a greater understanding of the whole of a thing that principle is applied in every discipline and it should be taught to you in anyone that has a proper education. However, it's not taught to persons who are colored. To deliberately keep them outside of the purview of administrative government in organized government so that they can be robbed, i.e. they become a fuel source for all of those other nationals who honor their mothers and fathers, which is why persons who are called colored are referred to as colors distinguished from nationalities. It has a legal function. This is what must be understood. It has a legal function. Such persons have no right of a state. Keep that in mind. Which is why they never develop long-term wealth. Are we clear? Because it's always stolen by those who are controlling the state. Are we clear? And, and to make sure that you don't exercise birthright, they put licenses on otherwise that which is your divine right to do. So your divine right to move around, they interrupt with an apartheid instrument called a license. So we're clear. Now, in constitutional principle, right, for nationals and citizens of a republic government, the Supreme Court would rule that that cannot be interrupted, nor can it be licensed. Are we clear? That's right. However, for colored people, such things or restrictions apply. And so you have a built-in caste system. Now, one of the things when, I'm going to give it to you, one of the things when Duali told us to enforce the Constitution and with your, with your uh, nationality card, which is a, an instrument of diversity, the European knows he's already obligated that those things don't apply to you. And when he tries to apply them to you, that's an enforcement of the Christian black codes of violation of law. It's genocide. That such person is supposed to be leaned or charged. I'm clear. Yes. And in true law, they're supposed to be hung. That's true. That's Literally. Right. Literally. Are we clear? 
They've been getting away with it because they bought off the so-called Negro leader guys and girls. And they usually uh, pick them from the Constantinian order. This is why 90% of all your so-called civil rights leader guys are reverends and pastors. Because they're actually, war the masses don't know that they're worshiping Constantine. I'll be clear. Because they usually hide behind the word Jesus, which is a password. And it doesn't make those persons themselves bad people. They don't mean that they're bad people. Do you understand? It, that's what their order is. That's what their order is. It is what it is. You know, and the, the charge is to serve Rome in the name of Jesus. In other words, Jesus is a front. That must be understood. And a password. I'll be clear. But in principle, Jesus symbolizes justice. It doesn't mean justice, but it symbolizes justice. And so they hang justice on the cross, and then the descendants of the Canaanites and Moabites, who is the bloodline of the one that they call Jesus, they hang them and lynch them. This is where all your traditional lynchings have come from for the people on the planet. The aboriginal people of the land. Are we clear? Now, and that's called birthright theft. Go ahead, your brother. So I just recently learned that Congress has the power to tell the Supreme Court what it will or will not litigate. Well, this is what must be understood, too. Uh, while you're saying that, stop. No, hold that. What I want you to do is read that first paragraph. The following law and definitions are presented word for word, firmly and assertively discerning and denoting the clear and important contrasting distinctions made between the constitutionality, sanctioned republic, versus the colorable, imposed U.S. democracy political order operating on the land, North America. This said de facto U.S. political order has been contemporarily propagated since early 1861 by questionable, plausible, and less than loyal politicians, by their hired contractors, by U.S. military officers, by U.S. social engineers, and by the U.S. democracy school teachers, etc. For additional verifications of and about their the U.S. Uh, uh, the U.S. de facto governing actors and of their organized cabal criminality. See the Organic Constitution for the United States of America, Article 4, Section 4. The reader must know and keep in mind that the so-called Sina D. Action of May 10, 1861, as committed by the Congress for the United States, was actually a coup d'etat. With this cognition, the reader's historical concepts about the contemporary North American history and its politics will definitively be more correct and conceptually realistic. So now, so there's an assumption that the Congress has an authority that they don't have. Since 1861, you've had no legitimate government operating on this land. Lincoln was the last lawful president. They overthrew the republic, and that was actually an enforcement of what you call connotatively institutionalizing slavery. This is another reason why it's necessary for the prophet to have come, to pull them back to their obligations, because the people have been groomed for generations under the Christian black codes, and they thought that they were really being governed by legitimate government. And so they had to be groomed out of that. This is the mission of the Morris Divine and National Movement, among other things. That is primal because their estate has been robbed. And status, write this down so you get this clear, status and estate are equal. Right. Are we clear? Go ahead, good brother. You made reference to Article 4, Section 4 of yes. the Constitution. Article 4, Section 4 of the Constitution. The United States shall guarantee to every state in this union a Republican form of government and shall protect each of them against invasion and on application of the legislature or of the executive when the legislature when the legislature cannot be convened against domestic violence. How many so-called scholars, writers, and how many adults have aided the Romans in teaching their children that the political platform is the US democracy? 
when it's very clear that it's a Republican form of government. And they promote it to this very day. Knowing that they're lying, knowing that they're lying, but knowing that people who don't read don't pay attention to details. They argue for it and stop wars. Exactly they do. Exactly they do. And they get mad at people who see through their vampire parasitic platform and venue and those persons that look like you and me who have been helping them all the while who are referred to as conversos. Now, scroll that, scroll down, Tam. We're not going to go into just scroll down. We're going to go into the depth of scroll, scroll down. Right there. Now, pull it up so you can see the training manual. Now, all politicians and all military are trained because they're supposed to protect the political platform from all enemies, foreign and domestic. And they take oaths to that, right? Now keep in mind, keep in mind, that in the Moorish Divine National Movement, in the Moorish Science Temple of America, we are prepared for governmental structure. And he says, being part and parcel of this said government, you know, being Moorish American, you know, you're part and parcel of the said government. You must live the life accordingly. So you're supposed to be living this life. You're supposed to be just peripherally looking at this thing. Mm -hmm. That means you're supposed to be totally competent and grounded. I'm clear. Yeah. Now, when we present, and again, like we said, we always try to make sure that people have documentation because we have a lot of enemies, even on our side, that knowing that the people aren't usually educated who will attack us to try to keep our people in a certain state of mind or to make them think that we're out to lunch presenting what we're presenting or that we're contrary to the cause. So this is what they're learning in all branches of military, in all branches of government. This is their training manual, right? Now remember, it's November 30th, 1928, right? Now when did Noble Draw Lee adopt a religious affidavit because of the infiltration? A few months before that, on the 20th, on the 20th of 1928, to protect the movement because it was infiltrated. Are we clear? And that's where you have the authority on the back of the questionnaire. So for those who keep on trying to act like they don't know this information, we're showing it to you so you can see it for yourself, all right? All right? Would you like to read that, good brother? Give, give, him, the, give him the, um, the mic. Islam, our authority. Book 521, page 579. State of Illinois, Cook County. Document number 10105905. Corporation, Religious Affidavit of Organization, form number 1099. State of Illinois, Cook County. Oh, County of Cook. Apologies. 1928, August 1st. I'm oh, sorry, 1928, August uh, 1st, 2.52 p.m., and recorded in book page, I know Dry recorded, More Science Temple of America, held at Chicago in the county of Cook, and state of Illinois, on the 20th day of July, and the correction, because when you go to microfilm, mm -hmm. it's more as Temple of Science held the meeting, mm -hmm. and then they adopted for their corporate operations, More the Science name Temple. Morris Science Temple of America. So Morris Science Temple of America named the corporate name for the Morris Holy Temple of Science. The Morris Holy Temple of Science, you check the records in Chicago, Illinois, is an unincorporated civic organization. For its business, you have a religious affidavit added and that is was done on that same date of 1928 and that was adopted in 1928. And again, for people who, who don't know law and don't know constitutional documents, they can fool you by modifying and altering the lit. Go ahead and read it. Now, and this is again, what, as I reminded you all before, that actually you do damage when you deal with the modified because you're actually promoting a false resentment and actually denationalizes the people. 
It may not appear to be, but it does. It removes them from their rightful claim to the estate because Juali also had a trust because everything has been breached. Now, what was supposed to happen is that, uh, like say, anybody that's national, their property was supposed, supposed to go in trust on the Morris Holy Temple of Science. And all of their corporate business was be done in the Morris Science Temple of America. Because all, all corporate entities are hypothecated, which you already know. But again, this is where her law come in, and I'm glad you all have been studying. So you can see that he actually set up government structure ecclesiastical principle. And people who don't know government structure keep thinking in their mind religion in the concept that they think religion is, when religion is actually law, order, and governmental principles. You know, and what I'm saying to you by these people really not having a background in law and jurisprudence, that they are usually subject to the dogmatic presentment of people who actually betray noble Drali, teaching these things without explaining that to them. This is why you find that most Moorish Americans, you know, read, read the questionnaire, and if you ask them any detail on 108, stuff like that, and Herd's Law, stuff like that, they don't, they don't even know what you're talking about. They can't even, they can't even begin to give you any information, because they're not being educated. And this is again why you're at the House of Reawakening Minds, because we want to expose the people, it's their birthright. And people who don't study don't recognize they've been cheated. And it's not to knock them people, it's, 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 it's not to allow them to get over on these generations to come, because they didn't got over on a lot of generations. A lot of people have spent their life in different organizations dedicatedly, financially, and in service, and have been cheated and don't know they've been cheated. Do you understand? So the deal for a researcher and for people who study and reason why I draw, they say go back to that state of mind of your ancient mothers and fathers, you find these things out. The same way that when you're charged to enforce the Constitution and you go back to the state of mind of your ancient mothers and fathers and you find out the modification, you find out the Sinodia operations. And so today, even many uh, Moorish Americans who are national are coming in conflict with their own birthright by thinking that the people they're paying tax to are their government. They don't even know the distinction between these clowns of the Kabbalah operations of the, of the Circle Church of Chancery England under the Secret Treaty of Verona and the legitimate government that their so-called sheiks and grand sheiks were supposed to enforce. They were supposed to step up to that constitutional obligation. And, and, and they won't know that they failed to do that because they don't know the rules. That's why I'm presenting that to you. So start again and read. So, and just to make a quick point, yeah. that actually goes to um, the Pontix tax and Ad Valorum tax. You look at Black's Law 5th edition, um, in Old English Law, Pontix, i.e. a duty paid to the crown according to the weight of merchandise. So the apparent Taxes to is going to the, the crown, crown of England under the secret treaty of Verona, and these grand sheiks and sheikhs and governors of the Moorish Science Temple of America who were charged to enforce that constitution have been encouraging them to pay the queens of England, etc., and they get their backdoor kickbacks with their 501c3 skull and bones agreement mm -hmm. and pretend that they're, they're honoring the proper noble Drali and have the Moorish Americans think that these people are honorable because they got feathers on them. Mm -hmm. You know, but those of us who know law see right through them. This is why they don't like us. Because we're not playing along with them. You know, but, but, but it's so few of people who really will step out and tell the truth. They got the, they sort of like they got the gang going on. You know, but they patting each other on the back. And the real deal is they're in breach. Severe breach. And the people who don't know, don't know. However, it's our job to teach them. It's their birthright. And logically, when they get hurt, we get hurt. If your brother's in the mercy of system, if thy sister's in trouble, forsake her not. So shall the fortunes of thy father contribute to, to the support of his whole race, and care be continued to you all, and your love to each other. First of all, come on. Go ahead. Just, just as a reminder, brother, what's it? I want a little more knowledge on that 501 break. Oh, oh, let me give you that. So write this down. Let, let, let's put this down so that you can get so that you can uh, uh, get this grounded. Yeah. 
I just want to, because I... You got to know some relationships. So let me, let me talk to you. Um, one of the CEOs of the United States Corporation named John Kennedy was uh, countering the Kabbalah operations of the Kazarian order under the U.S. democracy that's operating at North America since 1861. With the reinforcement of uh, the Constitution du jour for the Republic, i.e. and its Republican form of government, Article 3, I mean Article 2, no, Article 1, Section 10, the restoration of the Gold Clause, which they abridged in order to institutionalize slavery, etc., and also to transfer the sovereignty of the office of the Congress uh, to the oligarchs in England under the Secret Treaty of Verona. This is where you get your three stars that you see in Washington, D.C., the Vatican, uh, Westminster, District of London, and then Washington, D.C., that has been proposed to the people to be the capital when the capital was and still is Philadelphia. You know what I mean? Now, um, scholars know that, masons know that, scholars, skull and bones know that, a fool society know that, uh, Knights of Malta know that, Knights of Columbus know that, Eastern Stars, Daughters of the American Revolution, etc. All of them know that except the true heirs of the land called Negro, Black, and Color who have been disenfranchised of their own estate. And the general education is to keep that status quo going on the clear. That must be understood. So you must understand that these people who are governing are substitutes. Now you understand the substitute in masonry? Substitute password? Now you understand Hiram Bick and struck in his head? England, Ireland, France? Don't bury in the dark north, North America, your own land. You're the architect, you're the real heir. You know, you really know what's going on, you really need to know what's going on. Jewali came with the lion's call to pull you out that grave, that shallow grave. High ram, high ram. Look at religious controversy. The moon, the, the, the sun stands at high noon, and the people still can't see, which means it casts no shadows, which means you're supposed to be enlightened. You, you see the point? Go Tell them about the capital of Philadelphia, the, the building. Oh, well, City Hall. One day, you know, those of you who want to, one day we're going to yeah. take Tammy and stuff. <laughs> and we're going to go on a tour in Philadelphia, which we used to do. And I'll just show you the architecture, show you how they're talking to you right in the architecture. You know, um, the deal of it is, it, that's why I say masonry is an open secret. It means those who have eyes to see, you can see it if you're willing to see. But people have eyes they do not see, they have ears and cannot hear. Read religious controversy. This is from the questionnaire. And see, now understanding some of the politics and the history, then look again of the metaphysical message that the prophet is sending, including the cosmological message. Good. Islam, religious controversy. This is in the Morse literature pamphlet. In this age, there is still much religious controversy as to the right. Big and powerful ministers have come to the conclusion that something is wrong. Some say it is the Ten Commandments. Others say that say there is a lack of sincerity in the purpose of the churches. Still, others think it is all worthless and not fit for the time it takes to attend them. However, whatever their final decision might be, it is certain they will make a change or rather try to uh, make one. The fact of the matter is that they have always had only a reflection of the truth and not the real thing. Like one who holds up the sun a, to a mirror and casts a few of its diverted rays in a different direction, so have they done with the truth that is supposed to have come from the East. But there are but few people who know what the truth is about man, and that few know that it is foolish to try to impart it to the ignorant. Although the ignorant has finished college, he is a fool right on, being trained to jump through a hoop. The longer he stays in the schools, the better he can jump, and the more vivid he will defend his jumping. From the east comes all light, 
But though the sun is hanging at high noon, the blind cannot see. The same is the Islamic creed from the east was brought to the Asiatic of America by the prophet, Nobudrawi, and offered to those who are sick at heart, tried for many years, yet they are blind and cannot see the light. Nor is the prophet trying to put new wine in old skins, for he knows that it will burst them. Still, he has the only remedy for the nations. The remedy brought by Jesus, Muhammad, Confucius, and all of, of the other prophets which remedy is true. The nations do not want the truth, it is too stern. But until they accept it and find out where it, where it is, there will continue to be religious controversy. All right, now, then you take in consideration Herb's Law, mm -hmm. right? Take that in consideration. Mm -hmm. Take in consideration the um, deliberate modification mm -hmm. of um, the constitutional bylaws changing partial, part and parcel, which is land mm -hmm. and estate, mm -hmm. to partial, which is simply attitude. Mm -hmm. And people who don't read didn't notice it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You, 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 you really got to understand, um, once you really become adept, you're supposed to start acting like that. Mm -hmm. All right, good point. Mm -hmm. And you're supposed to aid those who have been kept in the dark by those who knew all the time, mm -hmm. but the people are enamored with because they have the title. You know, people don't understand color. If somebody has a title, they get enamored with the title and don't pay attention to the works and the fruit and the mission of the charter. See, so people get involved with uh, people who supposedly be dealing with these people with rights and don't know anything about the jure government distinguished from de facto. And yet these are the people making decisions and passing so-called legislation concerning your estate and your rights and your lack thereof. And they won't address it because it will show who they are. Now, write this down, good brother. 501c3, write this down. And Lyndon Baines Johnson. Now, Lyndon Baines Johnson, um, which frankly, anybody who really knows the real politics had a hand in the assassination of John Kennedy. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the major causes or, or the motives for the assassination of John Kennedy was, I think, was executive order, what was it, uh, uh, 11110, the restoration of Article 1, Section 10, the Gold Clause. Now, we're not even getting into, you know, the Eisenhower thing of the abrogation of Article 3, diversity of nationality. So everybody keeps talking about the abrogation of Article 1, particularly when people get a little bit conscious about what's really going on in the politics. All right, so the 501c3 is an agreement made by Skull and Bones and directed to the Negro marching leader guys who were 99% were reverends, and this is where they get the tax break by opening up some church in the so-called black community and keep them marching and praying and keeping hope alive and <laughs> mystified, you know, that one of these days they'll get a sandwich, but the day give everybody else your sandwich. And this is what, where that comes from. So the, the 501c3 was set up by Skull and Bones operative Lyndon Baines Johnson to control their marching Negro leader guys. And so now the implication is, is that they're not paying taxes because they're teaching the word type thing. Of course, they never teach etymology, so the people can't read any damn way. But they, you know, they're proud of themselves because they think they're dealing with spirituality. They're actually dealing with skull and bones. Now, and so, now when, uh, and so all these so-called black leaders are taken to the mountaintop in masonry. And the mountaintop is your great seal pyramid, which you will also see on the back of that one dollar note, which is, which is an oxymoron, because it's really not a dollar. It's a debt note of the Jesuit order via the chancery members of the Circle Church via the Federal Reserve operators when Wilson sold the government in 1913 as a countermeasure to Nova Dwali, who's commanding the restoration of the estate of these Moors. 
you see. You got to look at these dates and these times, even with the conversion of the alloyal titles, 1913. And so you, you don't see none of these people claiming to love no Dwali, you're talking about their governors and grand sheiks, even discussing the conversion of alloyal titles to mortgages and deeds, 1913, like it never even happened. And Moorish Americans have been suffering under the Christian black codes ever since, with no remedy, but yet they were given the remedy. Do you understand? Yeah. Duali gave them the remedy in, in, officially, actually before, mm -hmm. but officially with the establishment of the old Canaanite temple in 1913. This is why they will mix things up so that people don't pay attention to details. And they'll say the Morris Temple began in 1913. No, the old Canaanite temple began in 1913 for the restoration of the estates of the ancient Canaanite Moabites, who was you. And the commandment of the Queen of England under their obligations of what you would call republic government, because we're under occupation to enforce that constitution, the um, ordinance of 1787 and uh, the treaty which supersedes that constitution and, so, and comprises the supreme law of the land. And these grand seats and governors of the Moorish Science Temple were supposed to be enforcing that law. Instead, they've been telling these Moors that Dwali didn't teach civics and spending the rest of their time attacking gods like me and still doing the job. So the deal that we bring it to the people, you do the research yourself, we'll show you the reference. You know, you'll see it for yourself that these people are in breach. And what you do with it after that, that's on you, but you can't say that you weren't told. Islam, good brother. Real quick, um, looking at the old the um, the old statements and prophecies of Prophet Noble Jurali, the number one out the gate, the Holy Prophet Noble Jurali told the Moors, "I brought you everything it takes to save a nation. Now take it and save yourselves." When he said that, the Prophet was holding up a Holy Quran of the Moor Science Temple. Uh, America and a questionnaire to show us the books we need to save ourselves. My point, you pointed out the infiltration where they made but some, you know, a, a, a seemingly a simple change, but from partial to parcel. So then the black cell and partial, which is land to partial. Par, par, right, par, partial, P R T I A L, relating to or const, uh, constituting a part. Not complete, not entire, or exactly. universal, not general, or, 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 or total. Now go into the law book and look at par parcel. And parcel, that was partial. Parcel is a part or portion of land. A part oh, of, that means these people is uh, tied to this land, huh? A part, so here's the Moroccan Empire. A part of an estate. Oh, the state. Oh. As used with reference to land, generally means a contiguous quantity of land in the possession of an owner. So, obviously, we went to contiguous very quickly. And contiguous, in close proximity, neighboring, mm -hmm. adjoining, mm -hmm. near in succession, mm -hmm. in succession, in actual close contact. So that means, you're that business, it? It means you ain't going nowhere else, right? That's right. Or no, along the boundary. That. Bounded or trans transferred by. The change from partial to parcel it's is extreme. Extreme. They, that one change has changed. This inherited the people of their estate. Law. Now, this is the deal. Those who have eyes, that stuff don't get past them. Those who are insincere, it gets past them deliberately because they don't want to rock the boat and they want titles. So some go around, they want to collect titles and, you know, different color feathers and no good while they're helping to enslave their own people. Knowingly, but they know that when the people don't have a background in fundamental scholarship and etymology, that they can't trace them because they can't read. That one word kills the contract. You exactly. Not only that, in law, 
can you change a constitutional or, or a, a trust contract without having convention? No. Well, how did that take place when there was no convention? It only got away with it because the people don't know government. Ignorance is lying. See the point? Go ahead. Now, again, I want you all to read this now. This is the training manual. As a matter of fact, since you got the mic, you go ahead and read it. Now, remember this. All the politicians know this, right? All branches of the military, they're obligated to this, right? Yeah. And yet, in the schools, sis, they're teaching these children that this is a democracy, aren't they? Well, look at what they all know, and this is documented. This is... This is so the trolls, because they always jump up. They, because soon, as soon as we start teaching the people, CIA already got a package for them. Mm. And so they're going to automatically be trolling across this country, talking about this information is false, and that is causing problems for the people, etc. And that I made this stuff up, type stuff. So here's their record. Go ahead, read it, bro. The Soldiers Training Manual, Training Manual 2000, United States War Department, November 30th, 1928. Training Manual 2000-25, 120, Democracy. A government of the masses, authority derived through mass meeting or any other form of direct expression, results in mobocracy. Attitude toward property is communistic, negating property rights. Attitude toward law is that the will of the majority shall regulate whether it is based upon deliberation or governed by passion, prejudice, and impulse without restraint or regard to consequences. Results in... Demagogism, license, agitation, discontent, and art. Good God, already. Now, that's what the people have been living under, but the Constitution establishes a republic that they have neglected. Mm -hmm. And that the Grand Chiefs of the Morris Science Temple, refusing to enforce constitutional principle of which they are charged in Act 1, <clears throat> tell the people to draw lead and teach civics. Well, here it is. This is the republic that they're supposed to be enforcing. Read the republic. Training Man 2000 125 120 121 Republic. Authority is derived through the, the election by the people of public officials best fitted to represent them. Attitude toward property is respect for laws and individual rights and a sensible economic procedure. Attitude toward law is the administration of justice in accord with fixed principles and established evidence with strict regard to, a cons to consequences. Great. Scroll it. A greater number of citizens and extent of territory may be brought within its compass. Compass and square, isonomy. Mm. Keep it, keep it. Go ahead. Avoids the dangerous extreme of either tyranny or mobocracy. Results in statesmanship, that's chapter 43, liberty, reason, justice, contentment, and progress. So now certain communities have not been made, making any progress. They've been suffering injustices and everything. What have they been supporting? They've been supporting the Democratic Party not knowing they're supporting the Ku Klux Klan because they don't damn read. And the people who've been leading them are 501c3 skull and bones kickback recipients in the background whose business is to keep them passive while they get raped, economically and politically. And then because they're not their proper person, when they seek regress, they're going into private commercial venues of human trafficking incompetently calling them courts because they have not enforced that constitution and they're literally going before the Ku Klux Klan mob. 
And now they're packing the jails with them. I think about 90% of our people, the people pack jails, but they sit around and talk about their beliefs, but they won't deal with civics. Nor will they enforce that constitution like the proper no Dwali charged them to do, and yet half of them got nationality cards. And ain't caught on yet. So here's their documents, and this is for every grand governor and grand chief of the Moore Science Temple of America, and you can ask them why they haven't been enforcing that constitution since that's what their charge is. And watch how quickly they divert the conversation. And so we'll start talking about Taji God. Oh, that's that Taji stuff. Now, the deal of it is, these people don't understand the dynamics that's taking place with the Democratic Party and, and with Trump. Trump doesn't really represent the Republican Party because he already knows his part of the Klan operations. He, he represents the Republic, and they're trying to preserve the Republic for whatever they can maintain. Meanwhile, he's dealing with dismantling all of the fraudulent colored contracts that they've made over the decades that actually have been robbing the people. And, and also to tear down the wall of the secured system that they have of the networking of the secret treaty of Roma operations that was actually designed to drain this, co this country of all resources and then drop it as a shell, like a spider drops a carcass. Now, knowing that Donald uh, J. Trump is a Knights Templar, you, I suggest that you do some research into the, the beef between the Pope of Rome and the Knights Templars. Now, that's not defending Donald Trump, understand, because all of them are arguing over your estate. Yeah. You get the point? So let's 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 get that out the out the way from the door. However, from a political perspective, Donald Trump is more in harmony with the constitutional enforcement than all the rest of them packs of, of Democrats put together in a basket. Okay. And so by our people not knowing that the Democratic Party and that the two party system operating now is two two sides of the same coin. Yeah of the demon platform of the human trafficking, pedophiles, baby eaters, that's true, etc. and that they've been robbing you of your rights under a color of law for decades and getting away with it because our people don't know civics, they don't know government, etc. and persons who were charged to teach them such things have breached a long time ago. So we're sharing with you some information and showing you their own documentation so that, number one, the trolls, which are guaranteed to come out, you know, they can tell you anything that Todd, you guy made this up. You can do the research yourself. Um, now, what you do to start helping your family, you know that uh, your status is dead, that your estate is dead. This is why you must nationalize. That's why Drawley said, if you don't do anything else, declare your nationality. You need to understand the purpose. You also need to know that principle of the operations of the Maghreb, which is what offer the most extreme West, is also what that French Muslim school Malcolm, and also end up getting him murdered because he wouldn't take the payoff, and they knew that eventually he was going to tell. So a lot of things that people see one way, they see based on what is called the controlled narrative. But those who really know the real history and the real politics do not buy into the public narrative was given to the public. They look at things more realistic. Now, however, at the same time, and as on the interim, it's important for you, as us collectively, to get your concepts correct and start enforcing that constitution because what the Europeans have been doing is liquidating everybody's estate to pay their private debt because they're being called on their debt. Are we clear? And because, uh, and this is back to House Joint Resolution 192, you know, the hypo hy hypothecation operations, um, and why we tell people to set up a trust. You know, of course, they didn't do what the prophets they do, so now we're suffering in a lot of areas that should have already been taken care of. However, you know, what we try to do is give people information where they can start trying to protect themselves to their best of ability. But you're going to have to study and you're going to have to be active. Mm -hmm. 
you know. And again, with all due respect, and I and I appreciate you know your enthusiasm, but I, I, I think uh, I'm just saying, being honest with you, what you read earlier is how many good people come into operations of organizations with all the best intent and don't know that the system itself is set up against you. Yeah. It's not a bad attitude. It's not racism. It is unum sanctum policy. And it's rooted in the facto government called the U.S. democracy that our people thought was their government. Hmm. And they've been voting for it ignorantly with the help of their Negro white leader guys, some wearing turbans and fences and some not. But the ones who are not using reference 32 and 33 degree masons, pretending they don't know that fez they got is a Moorish fez. And so the game has been played on these people over and over again. Your job is to pull the wool off their eyes. Islam, like Drali said, I pull the wool off of all secret organizations, which means there's no need for you to still be stupefied and be abused without a challenge. Speaking of pulling the wool. Um, in your Black's Law, this is a Black's Law fifth, and it's in the fourth, of course, and many more. Mm -hmm. Color of law is a term that you're using, your grace, and I'm going to read color of law and give the example. Color of law, the appearance or semblance without the substance of legal right. Misuse of power possessed by virtue of state law and made possible only because wrongdoer is clothed with authority of the state in actions taken under color of law. Then it is a case law. And then it says, as used in civil rights. Acts mean the same thing as state action. Now, again, when you look at it, now, um, Dr. Nayon, in our earlier conversation, you know, about certain strategies that have been used, that have been coming under criticism, yeah. about liens, mm -hmm. these people are already in breach. They, they already are in breach. Mm -hmm. Now, give me, I'm giving you an example. Like, say if we do a class action suit against these colorful actors, right? Because they're colorful venues, they'll bounce that suit around for 10 years, wow. drain you economically, wow. and deny you due process. However, a lien starts activating immediately on them. <laughs> you put them on notice, and you lien it, but that should be a standard. These things should have been done decades ago by persons who were in position, put in position with title to have to enforce this law, and they have not. And so what you have is descendants suffering the Negro Acts and the Christian Black Codes and the War Powers Act, and they've been diverted by their leader girls and leader guys talking about, you, 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 you're, you're poor because your skin is dark, mm. and because somebody doesn't like you, and because they're prejudiced and they're racist, so that makes you poor, rather than telling you the truth that your estate has been hypothecated under the Christian Black Codes and the Doctrine of Discovery is operative under a de facto body politic of cabal operatives who are not government, who are in fact imposters, but are alleging to have the authority of government that does not exist with them. And persons who were set among your own, who were put in power to make law to step up to that constitution have failed to do so and have left you victim open to these people while in the background they get a 501c3 kick back, and then spend the rest of their time attacking guys like Taji God, who don't play with them. Because I won't play games with them, you know, go around with them like a peacock, you know, with my feathers on, and, you know, a bunch of badges all over the place to try to impress anybody, because I already know these people are frauds. But uh, the deal is they know that I know that they're frauds. But they also know that the masses aren't educated, so the masses get caught in who they like and who they don't like when that's not even an issue. They're suffering. Their families are suffering. They're losing property, they're losing rights, etc. simply for not understanding what that nationality part of really is. Islam, go ahead, sister. Islam. Give it a mic. Come back.
It's long, Grand Sheik. It's long. Um, speaking of suffering, on the flip side, we have a level of comfort in our um, in our unconscious wars. Yeah. And I was looking at the news, and I, it was a uh, it wasn't even a news. I think it was like a clip, and it was showing a church service of the installment of a, a pastor who was trans and being installed into a new congregation in the Atlanta Territory. And the line that had drawn to get into that facility was unprecedented. I mean, it was like amazing. Yeah. And I'm saying to myself, like, it was like watching people, to me, I felt like I was looking at people sleepwalk. Yeah, it is. And I'm like, well, what is it that, I know, you know, it's like everyone has their own internal clock, but we're racing, not against time, but everything is against the ability to liberate our people and wake them up. And it's like, when you try to have the conversation, it's like you, you fight them, you fight people that are, that are asleep. Yes. It so is. what is, some people feel that I don't understand they do of understand. being a Moor because do I don't know who my grandmother is. Yes, they do. You no, know, I'm just saying that's some of the conversations people say, well, I don't even know who my grandmother, great-grandmother is. Yes. How would I know that I'm a Moor? Now, so could you help me and maybe some people out there yeah, that may have this conversation as yeah. well with others? It's very simple. It's a good. Now, who in here, I'm going to show you how simple this is. Who in here didn't know that they were Moors? Until All right, now, your all newcomers, now, I'm going to show you something. Didn't know it's something. Now, hold on. Let's show how simple, how simple this stuff is. How simple this stuff is. Get two dictionaries over there. Get Webster's Dictionary, another dictionary, and, and get both of them the dictionaries. Then we got the magnifying glass in the back just so they can have it. Or get them your spectacles. <laughs> Y'all, all right, give, give one to the brother, and I want the sister to have one. Then I'm going to give you a third grade and a mom degree, right? Now, for the time being, you can turn this light back on. That's the first switch right there. There's another dictionary up there. Yeah. It. Now, I want to make a point to you. This is point, third grade. Now, in masonry, now, understand masonry, ma, son, ma, son, study, right? So when you're dealing with herb, herb blend, right? You're dealing with the north, right? Now all priests know that's where you get your news. You do you use your compass and your square dealing with the radii of the effect of the Son of God on the earth, the life forces, etc., the four seasons, the four gates that's talked about in the book of Revelation, three in the north, three in the east, three in the west, three in the south, that's your north gate, all right? That is the glyph of the earth, all right? In the abstract, in the abstract, these would be like that, in the abstract, right? And then that would be three, as you have, in each section, right? And this will be your mutable changes, it will be your fixed, cardinal. you know, yeah, your cardinal. And so your cardinal, these are your fixed points here, right? And so these are representatives of the gates of rulership on the earth. And so you would say, I rule the earth. And that would be a high priest. Now, are they the God of the earth? Or have they declared themselves God as is in the book of Thessalonians 1 and 2 and you were warned? Hold on. Now, so when they take you into the lodge and they tell you about mother and son, which is my son's study, Mason Ring, they give you three degrees. And in three degrees, they tell you everything, really, technically, and everything else is additional. Are we clear? So let's give three degrees in the system of the fundamental gate education that's based on nature. And so you have one to three, which is what? Giving you the elements, isn't it? And then from four to six, right? And so your half, or either your southern jurisdiction, they call it more jurisdiction, southern jurisdiction, they're giving you what you call elementary 
So you're dealing with elements. All right? So you're giving your fundamentals. All right? So now, so third grade Edelman degree. And that was symbolized degree, right? Yeah. And so we'll go degree. Right? Gradient means ascension. Alright? Mm. Now, so when they're little children, they might make them little, make them little caps and gowns to impress them. And they'll give you they'll give them the tassel. Yeah. And they'll do the four squares, and your four squares is 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. Sir, no. 360 degrees. Yes, sir. Right? So you got 360 degrees, or what's called full circle. Right? So a full circle is 100%, right? So 100% 360 degrees are geometrically symbolized equality, right? Yeah. And so in your old Bibles, they'll give you the great circle and they'll put a dot in the center. And that symbolizes what they call God. But also in geometry and in also physics and astrophysics, it represents the symbol of the sun. Yes, sir. And so they close the Bible, Malachi, the last of the Old Testament, the Torah, Tanakh, etc., with Malachi, and they say the sun of righteousness rises with healing in his wings. Yes, sir. And it's spelled S U N, not S O N. So it ain't like it ain't in the book, and it ain't like they don't know. What they won't admit to is another issue. Right? And so the Son of Righteousness has tools. It's called Carpenter's Tools. And so with the compass, which pivots here, you go around the radii of the earth, and this gives you your angles, which are also called angels. That's true. <laughs> and so the three wise men calculate the stars, master astrologers, MA, mm -hmm. activating the thalamus right here in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. The nerve comes out of the dark side of the brain, terminates over the nose right there. It's called anointing my head with oil. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. And so let's go with third grade fundamental reasoning. So the word is God, and the word was with God. And the word was God. That's right. So how come they don't teach these people how to read the word? They go around professing the word, but they can't damn read. Right? So now, we're going to deal with third grade and long degree. Parts of speech, right? Yeah. Parts of speech. And so speech concerns what? Word transfer. Are we clear? Yeah. So with words, you have classification. Right? Mm -hmm. And so you've got Damn. eight of them, right? Mm -hmm. It's third grade and a degree, right? Now, parts of speech, so come on real quick. Come on, Super G, because you're sitting right there. Adverb, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, all right, okay. Adverb, right? Yeah. Adverb. Noun. You said adjective, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Adjective. Yeah. Noun. Noun. And you said noun. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on, y'all. Pronoun. 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 Verb. 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 Huh? Preposition. What? Preposition. Conjunction. Come on. Conjunction. What's your function? Conjunction. Interjection. Yes, and that is sometimes. So they always say eight, and then they. That's all right. That's all yeah. right. Uh, Jared, what is that? Right, all right. Now, but this is the point that I'm making to you. This is the point I'm making to you. 
Is that air conditioner? Yeah. Huh? Now, unless it indicates on that air conditioner, and it would be more modern than the older models, you would check on the back to see if that's 120, 115, 120, or 240. Yeah. And the juice that you run to that will be accordingly. You don't go plugging your iPhone in there to charge your phone. <laughs> Not a good idea. <laughs> it might burn up. And for people who can't think, they'll sometimes configure the outlet to uh, so that you can't accidentally, yeah. with intelligence, stick your phone and your radio in there. So it's gonna burn up. Same thing. Now, so first there was the word. Say it, y'all. First there was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And the word was God. Which word in those sentences is prominent? God or word? Word. Word. How many people pay attention to that? <laughs> now, if you know the word, the rule of the word is called the etymon. And the etymon in language is the seed, the ovum, the beginning, the genesis of a word. And for those who read, you do not violate that rule. That rule for the first or the creative spirit of that word is what it means. And anything else that's added to it later is connotative, it is not denotative. And a scholar knows that, a priest knows that, a mason knows that, PhD knows that. People who can't read and who are intended not to compete aren't taught that rule. But they're told they got the word. And usually the person that said that is wearing a $3,000 suit and a $60 million airplane and these people is giving them their iPhone finance trying to keep their phone on and the house that was supposed to go to their children come from their grandma. It goes to this guy who says that he's taking care of Jesus' hand. Because he's he needs it because he's promoting the word. <laughs> These people can't read. Now this is the rule. Open your dictionary look up black. Yeah, yeah, both of you, because you both didn't give them the book. Not even give them the book. They didn't give you one. <laughs> you give me one. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. We got one. Hold on, we got one. Well, listen, at the I house of Ram, which one? At the house of Ram, we always have more than one. I know that's right. <laughs> house of Ram, we got more than one. No, we got some mines tonight. Well, they didn't oh. have any shortage of black. You give me a tablet. Now, this is the point that I'm making to you. Now, remember, remember, this is a rule for all scholarship. I'm clear. All around the world. So, when people talk about their different beliefs, that has nothing to do with it. I'm clear. It's the rules of words. If you deal with the Bible, Quran, the Wasli, the Vedas, Bhagavad Gita, doesn't matter. Are we clear? All scholars use this science to trace other scholars. If you're doing, as an example, a transliteration of somebody else's work, you were doing an etymological application in your work of transferring or transliterating other work in order to see if things were not modified or altered, i.e. along the same lines as we would not be having a serious discussion right now about George Washington's iPhone, would we? <laughs> same way with language. When you're doing research and you'll see that a writer does what you call a retrograde action in a phrase that is in social engineering and puts it into a timeline where it does not apply, and then call it history, another scholar knows he's lying his ass off. Persons who can't read can't tell. Are we clear? Yeah. Now, black, read it. Black. Give him the mic. Give him the mic. <laughs> now, now notice this. So here's the word. So now the word at this moment, right? And this is for your children too. At this moment, and sis, this is for the babies. Basic at a mom degree. So now where word is, 
right? Then you put the word, so now the, the word that goes here now is black, right? So now, all right, give us the definition. Here it says, uh, the darkest color. Stop. I ding, 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 ding. Now you want to stop. You're wondering why, you're wondering why I stopped you, right? All right, go again, because we want to we want to hear you very clearly, right? <laughs> the darkest color. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Come on, go again. Go down. So. Read the first thing you see. The first thing I see. First thing. The first thing I see is the word black. And then what do you see? And uh, and and. and, and an abbreviation, black, B L A K. You mean it doesn't have it doesn't have a part of speech there? Now, now the end. We read M for now. M. Yeah. And then it goes on to say number one. And then it says the darkest color. Ideally, ideally. Where you at? Right here. Right here. Oh, S I N. Oh, my man, I want to be Black adjective. Hold on. Stop. 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 Now, what's that other part of speech we missed, y'all? Adjective. Now, the point that I'm making to you is, for social engineering purposes, they will deliberately misclassify. That's why you always go to the etymon. What is the etymon? Root word. Now, no, what, no, what, what is the etymon? All right, now, someone else get a dictionary, and you hold on because we go, we're gonna work with each other. Somebody grab a dictionary, look up etymon and etymology. Now you hold on because you're not done. Because this is a this we're going to show you how easy it is to teach somebody if you're honest, if you want to teach them. Distinguish from getting them emotionally charged and calling it spirituality or learning when it really isn't. Alright, so the deal of this is not to convince you, but to let you see yourself and then it's yours. Oh, are we clear? Alright. Now, dictionary. Etymon. Etymology. Etymology. Etymon. Etymology. Yeah. Give it a mic. Etymon. Etymology. Now she's a substitute, and she's going to she's going to be teaching children, and she has a good heart, and she has good will to do so. Right. Now, what we're going to recognize immediately, right, is that when they set her upon these children, that she's going to recognize immediately that these children are being cheated, right? And it may never have been dawned, dawned on her because she was cheated also. All right, so we etymologists, this, and pay attention to this, brother. Take notes, y'all. Do you want me to go down and just start reading? Because it has the, the, the etymology part of it. Read both etymology. Um, now, in mons ma, the linguistic form from which another form is historically derived as the Latin core heart, which is the etymon of English, cordial, or the Indo European, cur, k, k, um, parentheses, e, r, d. Just make it clear, but you gotta make remember you're teaching children. Which is the etymon of Latin core, Greek, cardia, Russian, sir, sir, this, sir, this. So it's giving you it's giving you examples. Oh, okay. It was giving you examples. So what is etymology? And the etymon. The etymon is the core, the true, core. the original, the okay. true meaning of a word. And so when you're reading anything and you don't know that rule, you are subject to adopt what people tell you it means that it don't mean at all, which is why they always contend 
that persons that think that human beings are colored, don't mm -hmm. worry, their children will never compete because they can't read, because they don't know the rules. Are we clear? Right. Now let's go back to you. So black. Go, go, go ahead, black. Microphone away. Do the black thing. <laughs> Yeah, we gotta, we gotta hear, we gotta hear. Oh, now, first of all, this is what you don't do. You don't go past this part of speech. It's an adjective. Mm -hmm. So now, what is a noun? Person, place, thing, or idea? Mm -hmm. Remember, we're dealing with third grade. Mm -hmm. So immediately, they just told you it's an adjective. Right. So it's giving you a what? It's part of speech. <laughs> so now, if you apply this to a human being, it's pejorative. Mm -hmm. Or what you call slander. Now, if you didn't know better, is because you didn't pay attention that they only told you it's an adjective. <laughs> so now they've misclassified persons who are called this, that that's indeed not who they are. It's a modification. You see why they say these people can't read? Yes, sir. Now, to cut time short, because of the, you know, because we have limited time here, I want you to go beneath that and look how the words morph, and you'll find the word compound. They'll teach this in third grade too. Two or more words put together, right? Mm -hmm. And you'll see black or more. I just had third grade yesterday and we did, we did pronouns. Yeah. <laughs> the whole point. No words, which, what I'm showing and what I'm demonstrating is how easy it is to really educate someone if you want to. But if you don't want to, you tell them what their, their party line of what they're used to hearing and they think that you're being supportive. However, if you have ulterior motive, you're just reinforcing this education. And they don't know that that's what you're doing, which is what happens to our children. And our adults, our, our, our mature ones, have been miseducated in the first place, so they don't know how to clean up with their children. They just get frustrated in society because their children can't compete. Then they go into that one education system and go into debt. They don't even understand that their children will never get out of debt. They just went deeper into slavery. Mm. They also can't damn count. They don't know how to use logistics to act to activate whether or not this is a logical thing to do. They're actually supporting a system that's miseducating their children. But anyway, you'll find a word just beneath that. You go look in the black area too, in your dictionary too, and you'll see black or more. Look, we need that. Just follow it down. Um, black, a more. Yes. Now. All right. It's a noun, right? Hold on. Mm -hmm. So now you got a compound word, right? Yes. It's in the dictionary, isn't it? Yes. Black or more, isn't it? It's a noun. And it has a dot between the a. Yes. And the more, right? It's derived from black plus. More. Now, is black capitalized? No. Is more capitalized? Yes. So it's showing you that one is a what? A straw or yes. an adjective which is connected to a noun. Mm -hmm. And more is the noun and black is the adjective and it's showing you right in the structure of the word. Third grade grammar. So these people who are called black Adjective. Who are they? Brown. Moors. Moors. Isn't there in the dictionary? In the child's dictionary? Yes, sir. Alright, continue. Continue to read. Um, this is the meaning. Um, number one, a Negro. Mm -hmm. Number two, any dark skinned person. So, any. Didn't say some. Didn't say, well, the one over here ain't a Moor, but the one that's over here, the other one, this is what they said of, of the color. They ain't. All these people that's called Negro Black is Moors. And they show you right in the spelling, but they know these people don't know the rules of grammar. So they don't even pay attention that black is small case. They don't even pay attention to the fact that it's a that it's compound word. And that more is capitalized indicating the proper noun. Does that take uh, five semesters in college to understand basic grammar? So these people, even like yourself, grown, 
Don't even know that your, your bloodline, your pedigree is more. And yet it's right in the book. You know, but I'm saying to you, it's not hidden, it's veiled. You, but if you can't read, it, you never pay attention to it. And if somebody who knows how to read never points it out to you, it never dawns on you. Then if someone makes aware, you aware of your pedigree, like no Ali, then here comes this other guy telling you, no, that ain't, that's a belief, that's a religion, and so you think it's a belief. And it is your bloodline. And without it, you have no right of descendancy. Not even knowing that you don't have a right of descendancy. Because your inheritance is in your pedigree. It's in the honor of your mothers and your fathers from time immemorial. Failure to honor your mothers and fathers, you have no right of estate. This is what's happening to our people politically. And people who have been benefiting from this, European benefiting from it, they get, they get in their back door kicked back and trying to act like Drew Ali, just talking religion like a belief system. He's telling you about your lost estate. But if you can't read, you, you never even notice it. But I'm saying to you also this. We went through this little exercise to give you a third grade grammar lesson. That's third grade grammar. That's not high school, not junior high. That's third grade grammar. Now you understand why they can come to these communities and gentrify these communities. These people don't even know what a mortgage is. They don't even know mortgage means dead pledge. Contract is dead and your body's the pledge. Well, it's because I owe them $5 every month. Mm, no, that's... No, it's not what that word really means. But isn't it even if you own the house, you don't actually own the land? Or You're sharecropping. It's hypothecated. Unless it's a loan which they modified in 1913 and nobody wants to talk about it. They want to talk about Jekyll Island and Woodrow Wilson and the banksters on Jekyll Island, they won't talk about the abrogation of, of colonial titles and aboriginal titles, 1913. We ain't talking about 1895, we ain't talking about 1865, we ain't talking about ancient pyramids of Egypt under Hotep. We're talking 1913. And these people are screwed, and they want to talk about what their beliefs are. Because their leader guy is feeding them down some spook game and still teaching them about nationality and birthright. And then when they tell them that, they only half, they give them a half-baked cookie. Because they don't want to get deep. See, they really can't handle that and stuff. Well, if you're not going to tell them the truth, you may as well leave them alone some to the movies. Because these people is liquidating their states every day. They've been packed in the jails every day. At what point do you don't understand that uh, this is now? Well, see, one of these days in heaven, they're going to get there saying, you know, and this is what they've been doing to our people. While knowing this, knowing that these people are in a dead state of status, knowing that all rights, all inheritances are hypothecated by whoever is running the corporate state, and the people who are running the corporate state are de facto. And Go ahead, good brother. And they're rolling in the king after push it up. That's well that's part of it. Yeah. Never heard of it. Good. So I'm just I'm just showing you. Go ahead. I was I was gonna see what you could say about the Negro marching leaders. Well the, the King Alpha plan is essentially all uh, the military operations coming from Unum Sanctum Operations and the Doctrine of Discovery, where they essentially plan to genocide these people off before they wake up. That's essentially what that's about. And getting away with it because they're denationalized. So since they're not of a nation, basically nation state can't come to their aid because there's no such people as Negro, Black, and color. And they themselves say that they are those things, therefore they're, they have no constitutional protection. Willingly and by consent. And since they always know Jesus, God, Allah, if they know all this, they should certainly know the fundamental constitutions, which is the supreme law of the land. And if they say they don't, they're not excused. Ignorance of law is not excused because your bloodline, your pedigree is your first knowledge. 
And if you're sitting around talking about gods and devils, you certainly should know your bloodline and you're not excused for even saying that you're not. And as soon as you speak up and say that you don't understand this, you're in contempt. And they will do the nigger act to you, stomp you in the ground, try to stomp you to China, and ain't nobody going to jail. And now how, how many generations are we going to keep this stuff up while protecting Negro leader guys who keep miseducating our people while they themselves know this truth? You can get the point, brother. But I, I, I took you through that short exercise, and that's also for you, too, to show you you can't, number one, teach what you don't know, and you can't rescue children when you don't know the rules. And if they can't read, they're locked out of every other discipline. Are we clear? And so we shouldn't be sitting around talking about Johnny can't read. We should be teaching them why Johnny can't read. Then after that, Johnny can read. It's that simple. Just show them the rules. That's all you got to do. Why? Yeah. See, Johnny can't read really pass. Just say, uh, uh, you're a pet, black man. Uh, 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 Nice, comfortable job, too. You know, they got that skull and bones agreement. Don't wake up the sheeple. Called 501c3 agreement, then James Johnson. So their job is to march people around, keep them busy while they get raped. And they be thinking, oh man, so y'all gotta make them think I'm somebody. Well, if you don't know who you are already, you're already in trouble. Yeah, you're gonna convince them when you don't even know who you are. Well, I had my ninth grade class watch this YouTube video called The Law of the Moors. I found it like five years ago, and I just kept it in my, uh, or maybe six years ago, and I kept it in my history or whatever. And I had them watch it. Mm -hmm. There's some lady was in white, a white suit or something like that. It was about maybe like over an hour and a half long, maybe two hours. And I had them watch that. Mm -hmm. Because they wanted to learn something interesting. So I said, here, li listen to this. Pay attention to this. You might want to mm -hmm. learn about this. And she's talking about Philadelphia, so you might want to sit there and watch it. And they actually were quiet because I couldn't get them to be quiet for real, for real, for majority of the time. But they actually sat down yeah. and they watched it. And I was, I was actually happy because they, they really don't want to do anything, any work. I'm going to take this moment to read mine because you just brought some up to my mind. So I'm going to give this to you. And then you copy it in. And, and I'm going to show this to you. That the advantage that other people have that, that come to North America. Mm -hmm. And um, and then you can like, and it's old. And I built, now hold on, get to you in a minute. Now, Years ago, about 86 or something like that. I'm remodeling my sister's bedroom now. I knocked the wall out between the garage and her main bedroom to make her bedroom bigger, right? Now, beneath um, one of the bookcases that I made for her, because she has a library room, right, that I made bookcases that go all around the room. She got thousands of books, right? And beneath one was the DAR manual that I gave her, I think in 90, no, it wasn't, yeah, about 93 or 94, when I used to um, teach round table at my house, right? And my sister um, did with the program for the children, right? Now, this is the DAR manual. Is that clear? This is the DAR manual. Are you familiar with the DAR manual? You're familiar with the DAR manual. Are you familiar with the DAR manual? Are you all familiar with the DAR manual? The DAR manual, you know what the DAR is? Daughters of the American Revolution. And this deals with citizenship and the fundamental civics of your relationship with government. No Drawley set up the Morris Holy Temple of Science. 
and he registered as a civic organization, which you'll see in your literature. Mm -hmm. 1925. Um, why are people aren't familiar with this? Nobody brings it up. <laughs> exactly. I have anyway, I yeah. stuff but anyway, I've been intending to get this to you. <coughs> so in your spare time, you are, I ain't got to tell you what to do. You already know. <laughs> you know what I mean? But the deal of it is, I'm going to make sure y'all got it too. Right? right? Now, these are fundamentals, and keep in mind that these principles came from constitutional principles and um, a deist, a deist who was trained by Moors, named Thomas Jefferson. Um, yeah, keep in mind, instituted a lot of these principles, you know, because the Moorish government was falling and the Europeans were brought into government. The fundamental principles of Muslim law, Fatwa, was taught to them. They were deists, they were not Christians, they are deists. I were clear, Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, all of them are deists. And I refer to as the founder of the order of the European being brought into the nation. They're not founders of the nation. The nation already exists. It's Maghreb. Morocco is the most extreme West. That's why, you know, you see the longest running treaty between the Moroccan Empire and Great Britain via the United States. You know, of course, Obama exposed that too. You know, but it's not unknown by scholars or masons. What you discover is that Moorish Americans with nationality cards who should have known this stuff from their temples ain't been told by their grand sheiks because many of them are, um, let's say they had no intention of telling people, let's put it that way, keep it as simple. What you think about them is on you. But their charge was supposed, you supposed to be, you supposed to be knowing this stuff because you're supposed to be charged with teaching other people. Are we clear? Including your brothers and sisters. You know what I mean? Which is why when it comes to the issue of government and jurisdiction that our people are incompetent. They don't know the damn rules. Go ahead, go brother. Give your brother the mic. <clears throat> oh, <okay. laughs> um, you'll have fun with that. Okay, I know. That's good. What I understand about the Daughters of America Revolution, she was responsible for the right now, you go to Washington, D.C., you can see the building. And the building would be all marble, including the steps are all marble. And you'll see Dolly Madison's clothes, and you'll see her turban. She wouldn't even leave the house without a turban. And the, the members of the Daughter of the American Revolution are European, um, European stock who can prove that they have descendancy from the harems of the Moors. But Asiatic women are not allowed to be Daughters of the American Revolution. They can cook. They can sweep the floor and stuff like that, but they can't be members. It's in Washington, District of Columbia. And that's your history, and that's just simply the truth. Then you'll also see the brass plaque that's on the wall that shows you the organic origination of the Union, and this is where you have the United States with a small U, which is the republic that was later overthrown in order to enslave the Moors, i.e. you. And this is known by everybody except you the common people. And when you go into any of your secret societies, you're led to that information. However you travel, or however you come up them, them, them compasses and them squares is how you receive. What you what do you come for? From whence you hail? You know, what's your mission? What do you want? Would you want to get drunk and party? Well, we got that for you too. You'll pay the bills. A handful of you will want to learn. You will ascend. You know what's it? Everybody you want to be part of the club, here you go. You deal with what you have, how you come. However, there's fundamental rules to organize society. It's called civics, organizational government. So law, order, and governmental principles. These are fundamental rules coming from ancient Muslim law, derived and adopted from, by the daughters, logically, because they was in the harems. Now, logically, what they've done is that they taught their sons I hope Kaitos, Kaitos and Kupa's clan, and they have been what ruling you with your own stuff. Their their missionary work is to keep you from coming back in power. Are we clear? However, 
the proper came and intervened with all of that. You need to know what proper hydraulic mission is on multiple levels. Are we clear? Yeah. What does it have to do with uh, licenses, marriage licenses? Licenses is a slave contract. contract. It's yeah. an imposed slave contract, an imposition upon an unalienable right, converting a right into a crime, and then draining your resources on basis of it, then using it so that they can make sure that you feed their family before you feed your own. And if you don't feed or pay Rome first, he'll take your wagon or your car to make sure that you can't feed your car, your your uh, uh, family. And that's called um, feudal law operations. It is totally unconstitutional and totally void of law. Under color of law, is actually unum sanctum policy under the doctrine of discovery and totally unconstitutional. Now, if you're not going to stand for that constitution, you are subject to it. And that's what a license is. It's a fraud, and it's a known fraud. Hold on, I'm, we're going to give it to the man. Those of you, when you read your, uh, um, your proclamation paper, right? Uh, as an example, as an example, um, damn. Yeah. If you want to open up the study class and then go into the proclamation page and then look at the stare decisive. You said the study class? The stare decisive. And how many of you have proclamation papers? One that's open. Then read from your prop. Read. Read. Look at Jay. Jay. Give Jay the mic. I think she's a record keeper. That's Rosalind or something like that. Is that the same for the birth certificate too, or the license? The birth certificate is a bank bond. So is the marriage certificate. All the instruments is issued by the corporate state are designed to steal your birthright and to make a claim on your estate, past, present, and future. Through the doctrine of discovery, right? Doctrine of discovery is what you command in a claim if somebody makes a charge against your estate. That is the evidence upon which they make their claim so you can prepare a counterclaim, rebuttal, or defense. Go ahead, um, Where am I reading? The, now, in your proclamation, go into stare decisive. The stare decisive are the right to travel. Now, keep this in mind. Um, and of course, this is on your proclamation papers. This is only to, to give you a clarity that while they're operating de facto, they're aware of the jour. Are we clear? So when they pretend, or someone acts like they don't know what the swell you're talking about, we're dealing with stare decisive. Now, stare decisive is established law, constitutional, are we clear? As well as res judicata, which means it cannot be disputed by any so-called court operations in North America, are we clear? Now, those are rules of jurisprudence. However, persons who are outside the Constitution and Constitutional government can't argue it, i.e. black people, because they're dead, are we clear? In law, are we clear? Now, the Constitution and the treaty come from Moorish law. And the Europeans in treaty with the Moors who pledge to that Constitution are those who can use it as a defense. If you're not a party to it, you can't use it, are we clear? Another reason why the European promoted the Negro, Black, and Colored brands and put Smith, Jones, and Johnson on these people so when they go out into the world and start talking trash about rights, they don't have any. Are we clear? Because they're not in their proper person. In common words, they're not being themselves. Are we clear? Go ahead, Jenna. So I see 13 um, reference. These would be, these would be, like, these would be and are stare decisive. Okay. So the first, the right to travel, the right to mode of conveyance, the right to locomotion are all absolute rights, and the police cannot make void the exercise of rights. And that's from State versus Armstead, 60 sections. So now that's a law already. So that means the Supreme Court already letting you know that when they stop you and be giving you tickets because a lack of license, or registration, etc., that they're violating the law, aren't they? Yeah. 
Now, the grand chief and the, and the moderate, moderate the chairman of the Moorish Science Temple was put in power to make law and enforce law. And of course, in your divine morning, Dwali tells you what the mission is to enforce that constitution. They have not done so. So the people are suffering under feudal law operations under the U.S. democracy operations, aren't they? Aren't they? But there was an order put in place to counter that and to remedy that. It's called the Moorish Divine and National Movement. Now, the people can enforce it, or they can choose not to, and if they chose not to, we've been suffering the consequences, haven't we? Yeah. Severely, haven't we? Mm -hmm. But this is fair and decisive. So, anybody that pretends they don't know that this is the law of the land is lying, whether you look like me or you or Europeans. So, when you get with them, you're not going to be arguing some emotion, you give them fair and decisive. This is the reason why we put that in the proclamation papers, because we know that these people ain't getting this information from their so-called leader guys and girls, mm -hmm. whose job it is to have told them that. And still serving them up to these Europeans and getting that backdoor kickback, mm -hmm. which is what they've been doing. But people who don't know law never suspect them, would they? Mm -hmm. Think it's unrelated, don't they? Oh, that European, he is racist, man. So he gave me a pile of tickets with a rubber band around it. And then when I went to my seat and they asked him about it, they said, well, go we'll pay because you, that your government obey the law, telling you that the color of law is the law, yeah. knowing it isn't. Yeah. You know, you see the sellout? But if anybody who don't know law and history wouldn't even know that they're being sold out. They wouldn't make a relationship. Once you know the rules, you start looking at these people with these titles differently, don't you? Mm -hmm. Then you start holding them accountable, don't you? Mm -hmm. Then you start moving them out of them offices, don't you? Mm -hmm. Then you start what? Regaining and reclaiming your birthrights. Mm -hmm. With or without them. Mm -hmm. You see the point? Now read another one. Now remember the law cases are to give you stare decisive to show you it's irrefutable. You know, because they already know that the feudal operations are operative on the hedges and the highways and that they, they've been robbing the people. And that by the people wanting to be Democrats, et cetera, that the people are agreeing to it. So it's like the, the people don't want constitutional protection, they ain't arguing with you. Mm -hmm. However, it's there for you, for those who want it, right? So if you've got a nationality card, you're saying to the world that I am enforcing the constitution. I am honoring my mothers and fathers, so I don't come under the Christian black codes. That doesn't apply to me. Go ahead, continue to read. And if you choose to, uh, analyze too. Or get the mic. So the next one states that the use of the highways for the purpose of travel and transportation is not a mere privilege, but a common and fundamental right of which the public and natural beings cannot be deprived. And, um, That's called an unalienable right. Yeah. And yet they're deprived of it every day, don't they? Yeah. And they're still talking about the law and the Constitution, they talk about racism and prejudice, which is a diversion and an incompetent argument. Mm -hmm. But yet that's the argument that's promoted, isn't it? Mm -hmm. They have no idea that these people just sold them out, you see? Because mm -hmm. they can't read. And they don't know fundamental civics. Mm -hmm. They don't understand nationality. That's nationality is not just a word. Yeah. It's not. It's a, it's a body of information. Mm -hmm. Failure to live up and to step up to that constitutional fold is kind of dangerous. Mm -hmm. Stuff can happen to you. And when it does, you have limited or no recourse. Go ahead. Wrong, fam. <coughs> I, I wanted to talk to you about that too because I just recently had a situation where police did me wrong and I tried to enforce a court. Yeah, like, I was, uh, if you don't know, like, the guy, the Delaware State Police uh, officer for the gun on, that was me. Well, yeah, and, yeah. and, you, and you got a suit. You got yeah, a major yeah, suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, this is the deal with all of us. Keep this in mind. Article 3 is where that venue, the arguments would be made of. Not necessarily from you direct. Mm -hmm. It may become necessary because those who are put in power haven't been doing their job. It's actually supposed to come from Article 3. Diversity of nationality, diversity of citizenship. They already know that. They already know that. People have not been making the argument on our behalf. Mm -hmm. And their position is, well, these people were put in place since 1913 to do it. And since they haven't stepped up and you all agree to be a party to that, then you don't, you've abrogated your rights. 
or advocating your rights. And this is where people really don't understand what the phrase sellout really means, because they don't understand civics. Mm -hmm. However, on your own right, you can take that stand. Right, and uh, I just wanted to say that you like you really have to enforce it because like um, enforce it. Say yes. You really have. You, know, you really have to enforce the Constitution and treaty. Yeah. The, the Supreme Law of the Land. Right, right. Was, you got to say that because people don't. People keep thinking it's an opinion. Okay. You, you understand what I'm saying to you? And, yeah. and what I want to say is because like even after I said this when I was a Muslim American, they still tried to tell me I was a black man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let's I told go. That was that, that's that's a slam or, Right. Now so, let's look at this. I'm gonna show, show you. I'm gonna make a point with you because it's not something that doesn't happen. Now in, in a general suit, they bounce you around for years because the venues is colored. <laughs> However, you go after their equity bond and put a lien on it, and then people do that on, as a common process, that stuff will start slowing down because that starts activating almost immediately. You, now, you can notify them, but you don't need to notify them. You notify them with your proclamation papers. You see? So they've already been given notice. Not only that, they didn't need notice because they're not who they say they were in the first place and they had no authority to do it anyway. They're enforcing unum sanctum policy. And it ain't racism, it's unum sanctum and the doctrine of discovery. Now, because the people themselves, as a general rule, are out of order, they've been allowed to be out of order. This is where most Americans come in and should be in order to disallow that from even taking place. When it took place, you, you shouldn't have to say another thing, the assistant grand chief or the grand chief of the Morris Science Club of America of this area is already obligated to have addressed it. I already know that they ain't going to do it, but I'm not, I'm not criticizing them, I'm just telling you. Right. Which is again why we're sharing information and doubts and reawakening mind, because these people are traitors. To put it bluntly, to put it lightly, to put it mildly. You know, but they know, they know that these people aren't educated and they, they've been getting away with breach of office, breach of trust. And this goes not just for them, any so-called leaders in any organization whatsoever that alleges to be trying to help our people. Are we clear? Or to be dealing with the economic and political problems that our people are suffering. They all know this stuff. Remember, this has nothing to do with belief. Has nothing to do with clubism. This is constitutional principle that applies to all free national beings. Failure to have enforced these things have brought us to where we are today. Are we clear? Okay. Now I just want to make that point to you. Yeah, and like, and go ahead. My last point I want to say is like, and they will go to the extent of trying to take you out of your character because after they falsely charged me and everything like that. They brought my paperwork back. They filled out my paperwork for me, so I didn't have to do anything, just check it over and make sure it's correct. And I had to go through and cross out everything and do my domicile and everything. Try to, put you in right color, yeah. and try to put me back into a colorful position. Exactly. Now, those protocols should be perfected. That's the relationship between what is called the nationals or the citizens and the alleged government. It's called civics. You're supposed to know the rules and the classification including the fact that you're not black, now you understand what Drawley said, you're not Negro, black, or color. You're not supposed to be subject to that. See, these people were supposed to be putting this stuff in check and fix this stuff a long time ago. I'm not going to sit around and argue about it. I just want the people to be aware of the obligations of persons in position of authority and that they're in breach. And so you're going to have to take the responsibility and organize and start taking care of your affairs. Failure to do so is going to hurt you and your families. And don't let people hold you up because they're holding an office that they do not fulfill. See, so when you know the rules in civics, you understand that just because someone is in an office doesn't mean that they are who they claim to be. They are colored. If they're not carrying out their charter and their charge, they're in breach of trust. All clear. The democratic plot platform, the U.S. democracy, was set up to protect corruption in government. That is its function. Make it, if, if you don't do anything else relative to this political platform, you better get that straight right away. The democratic party set up by the Ku Klux Klan to protect corruption in government.
period. Nothing that comes out of it is for your protection or, or the securing of your rights. All of it is to steal your rights, to convert your rights. All your licenses and stuff that you suffer from now and these stops here is, is demo principles. Prior to the turnover of government, all of these Asiatics that call themselves today nigger, black, and color, and whatever coon shine they want to be this week, used to be Republican because it came from Muslim law, from their own forefathers. They abandoned it following after the Romans, and now they're subject to the Christian black hoods. And both parties are now a flip of the same coin, and you've been suffering. Therefore, you're charged yourself, declare your nationality and to enforce that constitution as all persons and claimants of all offices are in breach and are colored. It is appealed to you not to be colored. And so organize yourself with people who are also not colored and get this work done. And if you don't want it for yourself, at least set up a platform for the coming generations to stop messing around because you don't have a lot of time. Okay. Now that's the fact. And while you play around, they're liquidating your estates. Mm -hmm. You know, so that you're still breathing, you know, that means it ain't too late. Because mm -hmm. they do intend to try to kick you off. Mm -hmm. give, give it a mic and then get the mic. Get the system mic. Peace. Question. Um, when you speak upon nationality and getting your nationality card, I'm native in the state of Delaware. My, my um, parents are. When you have families that have been broken. Yes. Christian black Christian black girls continue. Yes. They've been under attack. Right. And then you have your family who should you say divided and conquered. They're called conversos. I'm naming I'm I'm telling write these things down because you need to now in, in logistics to fix things you want to get away from estimating things and get specifically to the component parts that you're dealing with. They're under attack of the Christian black hoods and under the hypothecation of being under the birth certificate under House Joint Resolution 192, all right, and right. their activities against themselves, what you call divide and conquer, is the activity of what's known as conversos. Conversos are people of Canaanite and Moabite descent that converted to support Constantine under the guise of Christianity against their own selves and their own people. They're called conversos. To the rest of the world, they're called black nigger sellouts. Sure. No, I'm just telling you what it is. I'm telling you what it is. So that, because when you start making an argument in law, you're going to have to be specific or you will be declared incompetent, which is why that was giving you these, even some of these legal terms, so that you can know what you're dealing with and understand there will be resistance. But they want, you've got to want your birthright back as much as they want to steal it. Right. And, Continue. And, yeah. and with getting that, to get that information, I've been on the website, uh, downloading papers. It's, it's kind of hard to get in contact with. Yes, it is, because it's a nation's work done by a handful of people who are smothered yeah. with responsibilities that belong to every person every being out here who is part and parcel and have not taken responsibility, they're looking for somebody else to make their sandwiches. And the deal of it is we have to come together and help get this work done, particularly since we've been betrayed by people yes. for decades who were put in place to have done this already and have been stealing the people's finances in the name of the Morris Divine National Movement and have produced absolutely nothing but pacify these people while they get raped. Therefore, we're appealing to intelligent people 
young and old, who have any honor and integrity left in their bones or whatever part of the breath that they can put in a bottle that has any purity in it, to come together and get this work done and enforcing that constitution. With that, how do we get the cars to attempt to even go out here and tell where it's this is why you're here at the House of Great Awakening Minds. And yes. understand, and I already understand it cannot be done in one session because your comprehension has to be there. You know, it's sort of like when they say, and it's true, if you don't know your rights, you don't have your rights. And this is a problem. And I, it's frustrating, and I understand that it is. However, you can't make people know. They must come to know. You can show them something. And until it is sincere with them, will their chakras open up and they receive the knowledge and it becomes their own. Then they don't need to be led. They themselves come together with others who are also liberated in the mind and they can easily get things done because they understand the logistics of a thing. What you discover is that our people don't understand the logistics of a thing. As an example, uh, in order to help our people because they're, it's difficult because they've been under the Christian black hoods for so many generations, the Pope of Rome did a motu proprio in uh, 2013 they did uh, a follow-up in 2014 with Barack H. Obama literally, literally in a synopsis telling you the history and telling you what was done to you, telling you how it happened to you. Yeah. And also telling you that the doctrine of discovery was supposed to be uh, dismissed or supposed to be dissolved. Yeah. You have the um, um, Committee of 24 which representative of, of, four, of 24 nation states in 1960, which deal with the dissolution of colonial governments. And the so-called Negro leader guys and all were appointed to dispense this information to these people. They failed to do because they didn't intend to do. You get the whole point? And this goes for all of them. I don't care what organization they claim, whether Islamic or Christian, they were all assigned. Even when Obama came back and signed the rights of indigenous people, all uh, for these people have declared their nationality. These same people, the churches and the civic organizations, were all contacted by the international community to dispense this information at all costs. And what happens when you start telling these people about their nationality? You think it's some kind of Moorish thing that some Moors are talking about, and that it has nothing to do with the rest of the world. It has everything to do with all of them. You're being sold out constantly. And so again, my appeal to you in general is that take responsibility and please study so that you can help get this work done for yourself. In other words, the energy that we've been spending in mosques, church, temples, synagogues, and other organizations for years in dedication, you know, being subject to this European, complaining but not having any tools has been a violation because it's simply been draining these people resources with no positive outcome other than that we pray good. We march good and we pray good and catch hell beautifully. And that's pretty much what our site has been. Now with yourself, say you have, right, you have a, a, a copy of the rights of indigenous people from the international community? Yes, I do. All right, so then you would deal with part one, um, act six. And, and make your rich in an intelligent manner. And that's the proper protocol. And come from an article three venue. Mm -hmm. there, there, that's it. Now, you can do other things, however, we're spinning our wheels, if you get the point. That's what, that's the venue that you're supposed to come from. All right, and then teach it to those who are willing to listen. And for those who don't, who are conversos, knock the dust off your heels and leave them alone because they're dead weight. They'll sell your babies out for, for a welfare check and a slice of watermelon. Say what happened? Retired. Yes, Islam. I just did a case, thank you. Uh, Excuse me. You taught me, you taught me, Islam, you taught me something. And I took it to the courtroom. It took a year and ten days. Uh, 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 diversity. Yeah, diversity. Article uh, three, section two. Yeah. 
And they, they sent, made a call and they held me in and they uh, apologized. Because I told sure, them in the wrong yeah, court. Yeah, I'm in the wrong venue. But it works. No, because they're already is, obligated. So and I, I really right. believed it and I lived it and I was that and I stood up my square. And this is the point. And it works. It works. It's really not really because and I, I said it. This is the whole point. It's because I simply told you what you're supposed to already know. Okay. And that the people involved are already obligated to. What has happened, most of the time, the problem that we have with our people mm. is that they come to this information on a learning curve. Yeah. <laughs> and it and works. That's great. Great. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's still it still being a part of their lifestyle. Yeah. And so when the European seeing that you're on a learning curve, he disrespects you. Yeah. Yes, he does. Because you're automatically uh, declaring yourself a ward. Now, people don't know that. They don't know that. When you come into the venue and you negate, you're up to remember the obligation of treaties and constitution is the supreme law of the land. That means it's superior to all other venues. You come beneath that, then you're subject to whatever. So don't get exactly mad if you get the whole point. Now, if you don't know that that's where you come from, properly, that's your responsibility, not theirs to teach you. Now, if you're a Moorish American, you're definitely supposed to know that. Because you have a nationality card. And if you don't recognize Article 3, Section 2, diversity of nationality, they ain't got to recognize it either. You understand what I'm saying? Because you're off the platform, willingly. When it is known by the rest of the civilized world that no drawing brought you back your name and nationality and the principle of constitutional enforcement with the old Canaanite temple established in 1913, that's a fact, it is documented, it is provable. Um, all his edicts indicate that, including the divine warning by the prophet for the nation, including the message to America. So anyone says that they don't understand that or whether they don't agree, they can say what they want the hell say, it's there as documented. And if you don't uphold it, you, then at that point, you've abandoned your right. Hard luck, hard nipple, that's all you're getting. And there ain't no milk in it either. You know, it's what it is. Now, when we get over ourselves, get over our egos, and get over our tendency to play clubism with this information, and understand that it's every one of our responsibilities, not one person who happens to be doing it, and then the other heard about, oh yeah, well I'll wait till they mess with me now, I'll come over here and try to suck your brain to solve my problem overnight when I'm really not a part of this. That high priest recognizes it already. You know, it's just like, you know, when you go, and I know this has happened to many of you all now. You can go to the store and sometimes, you know, like you have a pocket for change and stuff. And you're compensating for some kind of wares or something that you're getting. And you give the person who's doing the register and stuff, and you give them change because you don't want to want to change back, and then you start seeing them doing this. And there's a lot of them doing that right now, on re cash registers. Now, they can get away with that because most people that's running little services things, they have pictures, because they know they can't count. Most of them can't count. And this is a double burger, and it comes up automatically, and this is, different sides of drinks, um, and this is the french fries and stuff. Yeah. And give them some change, you know, and they start <laughs> doing this, don't be surprised. Now, in law, problem. In law, such persons is immediately declared incompetent. In the relationship of, of inheritances and estates, if a man or woman come before a tribunal of any type, not in proper, in proper persona, not in their proper person, i.e. not being themselves, first strike. So the first strike is that they have no standing. Now if they start arguing trash, now they're in contempt. And if they keep running them out, they're really in contempt. They don't get it because they don't understand because they know what, that this is wrong or something like that. You know, mentally they know this is BS, but they don't understand standing and status. Then if you make the argument, you can come as yourself or what they would designate as an individual. They would designate as an individual. You do have standing, but if your argument 
does not go to constitutional principles, they have no obligation to hear it, mm -hmm. nor to respond, mm -hmm. although they can if they choose to, mm -hmm. right? Now, if you don't check them, because constitutions are in place to put people who claim to be government, as well as people who are in government, in check. Mm -hmm. Failure to exercise that right, which is not given, it exists with you already. And if you don't know those rules, you already, you know, you're already playing with a marked deck. And they're not going to sit there and teach you what you should have known before you was let out your house to get on the street. Mm -hmm. Because you have social duties to these responsibilities in society mm -hmm. and should be taught to you at home or in your civic organization. That's a responsibility. Mm -hmm. And whatever so-called religion they claim, notwithstanding, they all have that same responsibility, whether you're Italian, operating in America, whether you're Chinese operating in Russia. Your constitution is what you're measured by when you deal with other beings. Failure to operate from that perspective makes you subject. Now, so whatever cards they deal you, um, you got to eat them. Now, if you want to learn how to play, it's called civics. If you want to enforce the constitution and take your place among the affairs of men, these are the rules. Get over yourself. You either adhere to the rules or be subject to color law mm -hmm. and call of authority, which is what's been happening to us. Mm -hmm. This is what we're severely trying to interrupt with not so much help from people on our side who keep betraying, you know, or keep uh, uh, putting their ego before the cause of the people mm -hmm. or their title before the cause of the people. The titles belong to the people, not to those who carry them. So if I go out into the world um, using the title of Grand Sheep, that's the people's title, so I owe them that service. Right. Outside of that, I'm just tied you with the cheap snakes. Mm -hmm. Get the whole point? Mm -hmm. yeah. If I'm operating in Great Seal on the Amir, in that office, outside of that, you know, I belong to the people, and if I breach it, I have no right of claim to it. Mm -hmm. And these are fundamental principles that people need to understand. And so, if, you know, when it comes to the principle of your brothers in adversity, your system, if thy sister's in trouble, for sake or not, it's also the duty of the people to be adhered to that political platform. Mm -hmm. You owe allegiance. You owe allegiance to it. Mm -hmm. Without allegiance to it, you have no right to suck off of it. All clear. Mm -hmm. You know, so the deal is someone can come to your aid, but really in standing, this is why sometimes it's difficult if somebody feel sorry for so-called black people and then try to speak for them, a lot of times they still get rolled because you can't represent a slave. Because mm -hmm. right. apparently he belongs to somebody. Right. Usually all you got to ask them, what's their name? Oh, Joe Smith. They already know. If you look like this, they already know that you Christian proper. If you black and you are contested, they already know that you're under the black codes. It, you know, your property, your ward of the corporate state. So any claim that they have on you stands before any argument that you might make. And if you have a contract with those names on it and thinking that you own the property, you're deluding yourself. Now, <clears throat> if you thought it was different than that, then tough cookies. Because inheritances are based on the ancient yeah. traditions and customs of your ancient mothers and fathers from time immemorial. It is only that platform that supersedes the canon law operations and the Roman laws and other forms of law, which is called the common law. And if you're on, on, on common law enforcing constitutional principles, you better be in your proper person. Because yeah. <laughs> if you do, you're colored or fraud. And this happens to our people, and it's simple to tell our people to educate them it's not complex, you know, but what I discover over the years is that people don't explain the law part of history. And so the people don't know that law and history goes together. And they think that, um, that because of the way they're taught, that because they're claiming Islam or claiming um, to be Israelites, etc., that that takes them out of the black foods and then turn around claiming to be black. Yeah, and them black dudes. You understand what I'm saying to you? Because the government that was set up on this planet is Moors. The government that the European made treaties with 
to operate in the Western Hemisphere is with the Moorish Empire. And if you're not a Moorish descent, you can't use that constitution to defend yourself. Get over yourself. And you can start talking about whatever club you belong to, and it doesn't damn matter. And people need to understand it ain't the organization, it is the pedigree, the bloodline, and the constitutional principles that is used as a defense against government. I'll be clear. Failure to answer up to those constitutional principles is economically and politically dangerous. And I suggest to you, unfortunately, that the Moorish nationality and birthright is usually not explained to people from that perspective. And therefore, their concepts are usually wrong. And then when they go to argue a case, their concepts are usually wrong, or they're looking for somebody else to do what they themselves should be competent to do. Every man, woman, and child should be competent to do it. It's basic. No different than the third grade degree. Now, when someone takes the position to claim, to take interest, to present on behalf of the people, they take on title and position, and they don't, they're not supposed to put their personal stuff into this. It's impersonal. And this is again why, you know, we even, you know, a few years ago start sharing with people some of the things that we've done for years as far as constitutional enforcement and put out the um, issue on restoration of Article 3 via restoration of Constable Court and put out the questions so that people can have an open test so they can test themselves. You know, because remember, this is their obligation. A lot of people think it's an um, interesting thing that some people are doing when it's their obligation <laughs> to themselves. You know, but usually what happens with most people, they don't really get serious with this information until they ask it, start getting That's kicked. Right. And the Europeans start stealing from them, then they want to rush, they want to, they want to pill. <laughs> no, they want to pill. <laughs> and the Europeans, because they're all high priests, they're all masons. Yes. In secret, they got fences. Mm -hmm. They already know your culture. You're under occupation. You can't fool me. You don't need to convince them who you are or who you're not. You know, you may think that you do, but if you think you do, then that also means you you don't get it yet. <laughs> you, you, you understand? The culture is so, the language. Yeah. The culture is in the language. Yeah, and so you're dealing with Article 3, diversity of nationality. Failure to recognize that yourself already puts you at a disadvantage because they're already looking to force a barrister on you. And if your language isn't correct or is it tainted, you're walking into it. Islam, Tim, give him the mic. Um, Islam, Islam, the bloodline, pedigree, heritage, which side um, is the most dominant? The mother or father? All, see, when you're dealing with Islam, the science, you deal with the science of life. Now, as an example, give me a questionnaire and put it in front of this, in front of this panel right there, so that the people that's listening, questionnaire, get the blue one. You need to get rid of that. You need to take that and leave that home. Now turn it around in front. <laughs> now, you notice that humanity is written on her womb? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> you think that's an accident or you just thought that was a good idea to do? It indicates the matriarchy, it indicates that the fate of humanity is in the hands of woman, yeah. but she's unconscious. You see? And if you look at it closer, you'll see there's nine drops of, of water coming from her body. And I won't go into analyzing all of it, but pictures tell a thousand words. And so the deal of it is, all human in her retents comes to the mother. You are who your mother you are, without doubt or contradiction. You are, you are who your forefathers were. So when you're talking father, you're talking paternity, which comes from process, not gender. And this comes back to being able to read. You know, in all Asiatic cultures, matriarchy, not patriarchy, so get over yourselves. And then all males, all of us sons, were female eggs in our mother's womb, so get over yourself. 
That wiener just came later. It's mom. You know, he grows what it is. You know, we got buttons that don't feed anything, but they're there to remind you of your origin. You know, then we got a belly button, which is the only birthmark. So you want to know who you are? Be your mama. Then also look at nation states. Nation states are based on that fundamental point. It's not mysterious. You all got to do is look at nature. Nations are called what? Motherland, flags, big them. It's called our mother flag. The rules that are indisputable by all humans called permitted laws and principles. Per means trismegistus. Per means thrice great. The Kabbalistic principles that come from ancient Egypto that they call Egypt. And thus all inheritances is traced to the mother and all of the wealth of the ancient world was made or maintained in the matriarchy. And then the sons of man, i.e. the sons of the manifest, were given a crown called the crown of the sun. It's also called the Fez, Tara Bush. That's our Fez. Mm -hmm. And um, it's red because it represents or symbolizes the blood. Why would you bring us out of the universal order into the physical form? And so that's why I call it bloodline. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so this stuff is not really complex. Is that people who have less than honorable agendas will try to make it confusing. But if you really want to understand government, study nature. Study basic family. The same way that the nativity, you know, the navel, navel, nativity, nationality. What's so confusing about that? <laughs> so but yet people will try to make it complex, won't they? Y'all say it's messier stuff that this guy made up, and we'll see in 1895, this guy did this, and who is bullshit? <laughs> he got a mama. Well, see, Adam and Eve and shit, you know, Adam got a belly button to tell him to get off that damn rock. You, you understand, the whole deal of this, everything that's been taught to the masses is bullshit. No, I'm not taking that back. <laughs> now, um, so, and the truth of the matter is people need to be told the truth. And people need to stop playing games. And we need to start fixing this stuff. And tell the truth on what got us into this negative condition that we're in. And tell the truth of the sciences that we have neglected ourselves and turned away from following after the Romans and then wondering why we're not successful. Now, when you're dealing with the science, anybody, any addict will tell you, any addict all over the world will tell you, no nation can rise above this one. And if you hear somebody say that, that's an addict who told you that. And if you don't listen to it, that's on you. Failure to adhere to those principles is costly. Go ahead. Yeah. So, will amalgamation change anything? Now you're talking politics and you're talking genetics. I'm now talking about amalg genetics. All right. Now, so now you're talking about birthright issue. Absolutely. Now, to to give people the best explanation of how to look at that, look at the book of genetics or the book of Genesis. And when you talk about Rebecca and Rebecca, um, Isaac's wife. Um, he went to Allah and said to Allah, said, um, you know, Becky ain't been happening. You know, can you hook her up? You know, type thing. It was, you know, it's, um, not work. And so Allah said, well, you know, we, we can work with that. You know, so she was, she was honored with children, right? Now, if you notice that um, the story of Rebecca is um, in chapter 25 of that book that you call the Bible. Yeah, how much is two and five? Seven. You think that's accidental? Now, what it talks about is a birthright issue, doesn't it? And a birthright means um, the true firstborn, right? 
Now, Isaac was born blind, and when you really deal with the story, you'll see that there's an issue that's talked about um, with Rebecca conceiving. And so Rebecca goes back to our law and says, um, <laughs> These children were boxing and everything, karate and collars and all this kind of stuff. They was, she was catching it, right? So she went back to Allah and, and making reference to she having problems. So Allah says to her, says, in your womb, there are two different nations. Two different manner of people. Now when the children were born, the issue was not made in the book about twins. The issue was made that one was red and ruddy and hairy, and the other was holding on to the seal type thing. Later on when they grew up, their name is Esau and Yahoo. They'll say, they'll hide the history, they'll say Jacob. It's Yaku. And um, the issue comes from when the birthright of the firstborn or the aboriginal was to receive the inheritance. Rebecca helped deceive Isaac because he was blind to convert the birthright to the one that was not the firstborn. And so that's the deception that you see in the book about the birthright. Now, you'll see the one was a man of the field. And he came from the field. And keep, keep in mind, a man from the field, that means you already know what's up out there. You will be able to, you know, get it on with food and all that kind of stuff, right? And so he, he was hungry. And he came to the other, and he gave up his birthright for a bowl of red R E P pottage. And Allah was angry at him for not appreciating or respecting his birthright. And essentially, he sold his birthright for a bowl of red pottage. Now they're bitching and complaining and marching all over the place. Now you understand when Raleigh says, What? You gave up your birthright just to gratify your lower self? Now, the other problem that you have is. It's not that the sons and daughters of Europe don't have Moorish blood, because they absolutely do. So that can't be denied. Right? However, they're not Aboriginal. Problem has been, uh, they've still been cared for. And so the Moors ceded all of Europe to them under Queen Europa. But they want to steal everything. So that's the problem that you've had with the Punic Wars, on up to the Christian Crusades, on up to the Battle of Tours near Portier, France, on up to the Battle of Creek, Michigan, on up to the Commercial Mercenary War that they call the Civil War, and also uh, backing up to the issue of Bob Boabdil and the abdication of the Red House in 1492 so that they wouldn't destroy everything. And of course, from since then, the Europeans have been living off in virtue, virtues. And that's what our relationship is, and that's what the politics are. So take it for what it's worth. And all your Masonic rituals are based on that, too. Including Hiram Biff, which high ram, high ram, Ram, Aries, the Ram, the impregnation of the earth during the vernal equinox, i.e. the stars in the east, eastern star, and the celebration of the Passover of Easter. And then you see with the Europeans dealing with what they call the Aryan heresy. So they declare the true knowledge and history heretic, and they've been doing the Spanish Inquisition against us ever since. That's what the problem is. So once you understand that, and you understand why you always say we don't seek to marry into the pale skin nations of Europe, what is the reason it's more political than otherwise? Because they've been missionaries to steal your birthright. 
not because you're rejecting Europeans because they're Europeans. They're hybrids. Now also, on the long term, we also know, and this is troubling with many, and I understand it, but let's, we're, 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 we're here to tell the truth, that the cure, in spite of this all, will be the sons of God mating with the blind sons, the blind daughters of the Germanic tribes to solve the problems of syphilis, tuberculosis, gonorrhea, and the insanity that she has been perpetrating on the world through committing insane sums because of her sad wound. Some are willing to um, entertain that. You know, some ain't into snow bunnies. And so we got, you know, we got these problems. Now with the, with the um, Knights of Temper, etc. Um, now the, the Knights Templars are essentially the, the body of Constantinians and Christians that are protecting the Constantinians and Christians in their pilgrimage to Jerusalem. And so that becomes an order to, to, to this day. They preserved a lot of the more science, a lot of culture. And because the Pope of Rome was on a mission to destroy the culture, they called the Arian heresy. Uh, this is where um, they persecuted the Knights Templars. And so knowing that real history, you got to know some of the contention that's between Donald Trump and the P2 Masons that's going on now in the current civil war that's being low key, if you know that real history. However, cutting through the chase, keep in mind that the red man or the hybrid, i.e. out beyond European, who is really the Negro, Negro's monkey, Negro Yabira Rebo, hybrid, because that's what it is, is dealing with the amalgamation which Charles Darwin and Mendelin and all of them talk about, which is the uh, the hybrid, but they won't tell all of it. They'll talk about the European, or they'll talk about man evolving from the monkey. When really, the monkey, or the Anthropopithecus, sperm was used in experimentations in the Pyramid of the Sun in Mexico, etc., that evolved into what you call today the Roman and the technical exercise of those experiments were perfected in Patagonia that you call Argentina today. And then they were taken to the Isle of Patmos as mentioned in the Bible, which is right off of Turkey. And then taken to the land of Angles, which is now called England, which you will go in your dictionary, you'll see Albion is the ancient name for England. And so the Europeans are really Albion. And of course, because some of them still display that animalistic tendency to eat your babies and do different things that a lot of the aboriginals just ain't used to, logically over the years and decades and centuries has caused problems between us. This is the contention that we have between the Europeans and the Asiatics. Now let's go into um, Hammurapia day. Now Hammurapia, the Hammurabi's code of law that still exists today and you'll see in its um, general entirety displayed in California for those of you who travel and do research in a museum. Now with the children of Israel, some of the harsh rules of the children of Israel being under the rule of the Moorish nation, i.e. the Moabite nation, the Moorish nation, uh, were stern, and this has much to do with the Europeans, uh, how do you say, vengeance, anger, with the first one today, i.e. you, the Asiatic. And so the missionary work of them keeping you from knowing your truth about your estate and about the history, is veiled under uh, Christian black codes, kaikos, operations, etc., prejudice and racism, which are all diversionary arguments to divert you from birthright then. 
So in a sense, that's where you are. Now, using your common sense, using your common sense, right? Now, um, in 1860, 1870, now after um, Ulysses S. Grant came into government, right? He modified the Naturalization Act of 1790, where the Europeans were being, those who were civil, were being brought into government. So that's the Naturalization Act. So the Naturalization Act deals with what you would call, say, non-firstborn. Are we clear? So those are citizens, and then you deal with the nationals that deal with the firstborn. Are we clear? In 1870, which you'll go in your law book when you look at those three white persons, and I want one of you, preferably a sister, to read that. Um, you'll understand, keep this in mind, Ulysses S. Grant modified the Naturalization Act 1870. And this is in line with, when you're dealing with the Wigamore Party, under Horace Greeley, Remember when Horace Greeley, um, it was suggested in, when he set up the Republican Party when the Wigamore Party split, and then they took on the noble title of the Arabs or the Moors, etc. Understand, Arab is not an identity. Arab is a person word that means noble. It's not a bloodline, it's not a nationality. And a lot of people today think it's a nationality. Arab is not a nationality. It means noble. Are we clear? Yeah. And then they, under the Wigamore Party, was suggested that they take on the titles of the nobles, and thus the Europeans started in 1860, 1870 area, started calling themselves white people. And that's how Europeans, who are really Albion, became loosely referred to as white people, which they're not, it's not a complexion, it's a legal title, and the theft of your birthright. Now you understand what Duali says in the questionnaire, he says, why did European take on the title white? White means what? God, God means rule the land. They're claiming your estate. But if you don't study and don't go back into history, you would not look at it properly. Now, in relationship to our trying to bring solutions to these hundreds of years wars between what they will refer to as the, Os the Orientals and the Occidentals, or they'll say the Muslims and the Christians. So when you talk about Christians, you talk about the Constantinian order of hybrids of the Albions having nothing to do with what you call spiritual development whatsoever, or religion that has to do with political systems. All right, and so they're also loosely referring to them as East and West, are we clear? So the problem now is that the Moorish government fell, and that's what the Mormon's prayer is all about. All right, that's what the conversion of your state is all about. That's why they renamed Matawaka, who aided John Ralph, that's why they renamed her as Rebecca. And it's also why they threw her over the ship at Grayson, England, and then renamed her in history as Pocahontas, and then started Jamestown in Virginia, land of virgins, near Mary, Maryland, divided between them, coded in the Bible, and set up the first aristocracy for the conquest of the Moors in the Western Hemisphere, i.e. the Masonic Triangle. All clear. Now, all this stuff is known by all scholars and known by all addicts, but at the same time, a lot of people are uncomfortable with the truth, and so they don't want to hear it. They want to deal with beliefs, and they want to stay asleep. However, in the real world, they're still in your estate. Now, you can either nationalize and start reclaiming your estate, or you can be fodder, which is what they intend to do with you. I think that's Tom Wembley, but that's uh, part of your answer. Islam. So now being reasonable, reasonable as a mother, as a mother, when our women um, become conscious 
And this is so a symbolism of them being unconscious on the questionnaire symbolizes that they need to become conscious. Because the fate of humanity is written on our womb. So we must go back to the principles of our ancient mothers and fathers, lest the earth be smitten with the curse, as demonstrated in the four, at your four gates, your four chapters of Malachi. You know, so now you've always been just. So what do we have? We have really? Just look at this. The alien sons of one mother. Now how do you deal with that? Now you understand naturalization and nationalization? And why they were put in place? It's already there. However, people want to do other things, don't they? Now, so, and because of the lack of um, certain benefits to the Algon, the Moors of the firstborn were put to sleep. And the Europeans have enjoyed the wealth of your estate for centuries. However, on the dark side, among them, some of the beasts, so loose for Satan, devil, dragon, and beast, sometimes called. They want to steal all of the state and kill the people off. So that's what you're dealing with politically. All right? Nationalization is to make you aware of the real history so that you can change your state of mind, but also be just. And so in the rule of hermetic law, you understand retribution and justice, and you understand reciprocity. All right? So now it is our duty to exercise constitutional principles and exercise just government and live according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. And hopefully, hopefully, we can overcome and eliminate those ancient hatreds. However, to remove the confusion, everybody got to know the real history, don't they? So the great Masonic secret can't be secret, can it? Because confusion continues government. All right? So do I need to tell you or someone what the conditions of naturalization is, distinguished from nationalization? Or should they already have known that? So you have the Naturalization Act, and they certainly have not starved, have they? Have they? But however, if someone trying to starve you, aren't they? That's your political problem. So the Negro problem is your problem. Some of the Europeans are helping me. Why aren't you helping me? It's the words of the prophet. Read through them. Because it's the real politics. It's not hard. It's just that we've got to get over our egos, don't we? Don't we? We've got to get over selfishness, don't we? Don't we? Vanity, don't we? Yes. Uh -huh. Now, chapter one. And read the body beautiful. This creation and fall of man. Now, I want you to pay attention to this because you're giving your science and you're giving your culture right here. Now, again, here's your four gates, right? Now, in the prayer, in the prayer for the... Uh, more solely temple of science, it says, Allah, the Father of the universe, the Father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Go ahead, continue. Uh, the Most American Prayer? Yeah, I want you to read the Most American Prayer, and then I want you to go to chapter one and we deal with the body beautiful. Islam. Islam. Allah, the Father of the universe, Father of love, Truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Allah is my protector, my guide, and my salvation. By night and by day, through his holy prophet, Jali. Amen. Amen. Now I want you to go to chapter one. And I want to go, I want you to go to. Now chapter one is creation and fall of man, right? Right? 
Now I'm going to give you the keys to your rise. Right in chapter one. Now go where body beautiful. And these, yeah. this is page five. And these soul attributes became a body beautiful, a multitude of lessons man must learn upon the plane of soul. So you are learning lessons. Mm -hmm. So you also know that purpose of school. Mm -hmm. All right, continue. Go ahead. And here he tarries many ages until his lessons are all learned. Upon the boundary of the plane of soul, the ether began to vibrate slower still, and then the essence took on a final guard. The perfumes and the odors and the true sensations and the awe of love were clothed in flesh, and man was clothed in flesh. Perfected man must pass through all the ways of life, and so a carnal nature was full manifest, a nature that sprang forth from fleshly things. Without a foe, a soldier never knows his strength, and thought must be developed by the exercise of strength. And so this carnal nature soon became a foe that man must fight, that he might be the strength of Allah made manifest. Let every living thing stand still and hear. Man is the Lord of all the plane of manifest, of protoplast, of mineral, of plant, of beast, but he gave up his birthrights just to gratify his lower self. But man will regain his lost estate, his heritage, but he must do it in a conflict that cannot be told in words. Yea, he must suffer trials and temptations manifold, but let him know that cherubim and seraphim that rule the stations of the sun and spirit of the mighty Allah, who rule the solar stars, are his protectors and his guide, and they will lead to victory. Now stop right there. Now, look at the prayer and read that last paragraph again. Now, those who don't understand the science think it's a conflict. But an addict knows the seven eyes. And read the last again. But let him know. So let him know what? What is it he to know? That cherubim and seraphim that rule the first station. levels of the two angels of the level of nine angels that they call angels, which were really outer beings that's protecting the earth. They're really guardians. And they're the first two levels. It is is actually seraphs and cherubs. Mm. Now they are other beings or off-world beings. Mm whose mission and job is to protect this garden where we're being evolved and developed because there's others that want us gone. Are we clear? Are we clear? Yeah. Now, and others that have been at different times messing with our DNA. But there's a nature in us that they still can't figure out. Are we clear? Yeah. And that one of the things is um, our capacity to love. Mm -hmm. And our malleable capacity also is of interest. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to read that again, and while you're reading it, consider the prayer while you're reading it. Go ahead, read it again. But let him know that cherubim and seraphim that rule the stations of the sun and spirit the stations of the sun are all your degrees around the zodiac wheel. Those are the angles that rule the stations of the sun. What is the stations of the sun? Is the eclipses, ecliptic, right? And the equinoxes of the transits of the sun by which all things are measured and so what we call time is not so much time as we look at it, but we measure time by cycle ages. Now you understand what Drawley is saying to you? Mm -hmm. He's giving you the key to more science, which is cosmology, astrology. And your knowledge of yourself, being that mathematical compass on the square of the rotations of this earth, in relationship to the sun and the moon and the stars, is your guide 
and will lead to victory. Having fallen away from your culture and following after Rome under the dogma costumes of religion is where your major blindness comes. So while the sun stands at high noon, they cannot see. So I just want you to read that. So I want you to recognize that when people see that the solar stars is your guide, that means you will be, be guided by that zodiac. Now you understand zodiac law? And then those, those who don't want you to see that, who are addicts and ain't teaching you that, will never make that correlation. So again, we're sharing with you so you can understand the lower self and the higher self. Now, although it is not exact, the Republic principle is a pathway, not the way, a pathway to righteous order of government isonomy. The democratic platform is absolutely for the lower self. This is your problem. And so it's up to you to fix this. Now that people are waking up, and um, we're going to close down because we're acting far over time. But um, I want you to recognize, again, uh, why it's important for people to really understand the civic evolution of the old Canaanite temple and then the religious affidavit to protect the info from the infiltrators, trusting that people will come along in daytime or in due time that would know the law, would recognize it with their eyes already open, and would enforce the law. And so therefore, you also understand why in the culture, when you go back into ancient Chaldea, ancient Ekupta, Egypt, etc., Canaanites, all of their governments are run by astrological, cosmological principle, ephemerides. Are we clear? And that will be your guide. So man, know thyself. How do you remove the perspective of biases that you may have? You go to the map, you use that compass and your square, and you travel around the numbers and the geometry of the construction of man, including the construction of man in the womb of woman, nine moons, dealing with the earth, the air, the fire and the water, and the subdivisional elements, and the 12 salts. And therefore, position, heal thyself. Know thyself, heal thyself. So we must give Christianity and the church back to Rome and turn our hearts back to our ancient mothers and fathers. But you gotta remember and understand that you weren't given religion in the first place. You were given dogma. However, the solar star is that rule, and the sun, the transits of the sun, mm -hmm. shall be your guide, mm -hmm. your zodiac constitution. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I want to say you know, thank you all for coming out to the House of Reawakening Minds. We're far over. And I hope that you learned some things, but I also need for you to recognize that the Democratic Party and the Republican Party as they exist now are two sides of the same coin with the Democratic Party being the spearhead of the demon platform for all corruption of all types. Are we clear? Set up by the Ku Klux Klan to see that you don't rise, which is why all these generations that our people have not had economic security. And so if you're going to deal with economic security, you must restore the Republic and you must recognize those who are against it and those who are for it and act accordingly. Failure to do so, you're at a time cycle that all states are being liquidated. Take your choice, do what you choose to do, but you can't say that you were not told. And with that, I'll say grand evening to you. Islam and peace. Thank you, Grand Sheik, once again, like, thank you for coming out and tuning in to House of Reawakening Minds, where we are a holistic center for spiritual grounding, free thought, self-discovery, and more science, and an awakening experience for all ages. Once again, can we please give a warm clap to our illustrious Grand Sheik for bringing us more information that we need to rise up and liberate ourselves as well as our king folks. Our upcoming event, we have Friday, Father Hamill Bay. He will come and bring us more 
uh, ABEP Knowledge and Science on Friday from 7. Um, we'll start going live at 7 p.m. As well on Sunday, I'm sorry, Friday we have our brother Aaron L. Let me correct that. We switched up. Friday we have our brother Aaron L., which is what our Moors get your rig together. On Sunday, yes, <laughs> on Sunday we have um, Father Hamill Bay at Deaf Science. From 3 to 7 p.m. No, I'm sorry. The fourth Sunday. This is the fourth Sunday coming up. On the fifth Sunday, <laughs> we will take a break. Um, Dr. G and I and Grand Sheikas, we all love uh, so to take a break on the fifth Friday of the month. So that allows us time to recharge. Um, we have some great things coming out in the near future um, that Grand Sheik will be rolling out. So please stay tuned to the Facebook page and you'll see that information being posted. Again, thank you for coming out and tuning in to House of Your Waking Minds. Good evening. <laughs>